It is the year 2021, September 3rd, Shangdu city center area. All the cars in the area are smashed. Inside a yellow car, there is an unconscious boy. His ID card reads Shangdu University, History Course 2020 Grade, Wang Zhe. He starts waking up, confused and wondering if it's all a dream. He looks around and sees a zombie in his car's mirror. He realizes something is wrong, not knowing where he is, or why he is in the car. He thinks it could be a prank, but since no one gave him a weapon, it couldn't have been. He looks around and sees a sword. The sword is not even sharpened, and it's rare to find a weapon like that in an apocalypse. But he remembers seeing the sword somewhere before. Suddenly, he senses something. He kicks the door of the vehicle and uses it as cover. He senses an old submachine gun moving closer. Zombies can be seen in the distance. Suddenly, one of the zombies' heads is blown off by a team of armed people with guns that reach the area. One of them calls Xia Ran to report the situation. Xia Ran reports that they are retreating but the guys needed to last for a while longer. They were running low on ammo and going all out. The leader of the group is wondering where the zombies suddenly arrived. Wang Zhe watches from a distance and thinks that the people were wearing old military equipment and even though they are trying to protect citizens, their plan to deal with the zombies is wrong since the weapons are old and the firepower is insufficient. If it continues, the people will get wiped out sooner or later. He thinks about what he should do. He is in a dilemma because if he goes to fight and high-level zombies are among them, he would be at a disadvantage since he doesn't have a weapon. The soldiers run out of ammo, and the leader shouts Xia Ran's name. She reports that the retreat is complete, and the leader shouts that since the citizens have retreated, they don't have any concerns left. So, he orders Xia Ran to use her pistol as support, and the others to take out their daggers and fight and kill as many as they can. The soldiers charge and start killing the zombies. Xia is the only one left with a bullet inside her gun. When the zombies are coming towards her, she tries to shoot herself as she does not want to get infected. Wang Zhe runs towards the scene, and Xia realizes that someone is there and questions why the individual has not retreated. The zombies race towards Wang, and Xia shouts to warn her, but before she could do that, she sees the zombies' heads being sliced off. Even the elite team warrior under the conditions of not being bitten could kill three at most, but the boy, unknown to her, was facing 30, no, 50 at the same time. She questions who that is. He looks to find out that only one has survived. He takes a knife from the fallen soldier and thanks him. He then throws the dagger toward the zombie and further starts attacking them. With his skills, he slices multiple zombies' heads. Xia is in denial that the situation just happened. Wang finds all the zombies weak, all of them were just wandering zombies as if they were just infected. Xia hears him calling the zombies weak. Wang introduces himself as a cleaner for the World Evolutionary Association team, Wang Zhe, with code 5379. He reports that he has completed the emergency rescue mission and asks the girl to provide information and required support. The girl is in shock. The girl thanks Wang for saving her but tells him she has no idea what he meant by providing required support. Wang confidently says that helping them is common sense. Xia says that she is from the military side and shows Wang her ID. Seeing the military ID, Wang is confused as the type of ID she showed has not been used for a long time. Wang analyzes the situation, sees the old police uniform, notices that all the zombies are Apocalypse's beginner weakest wanderer type. Xia asks why he is suddenly in a serious mood. Wang asks for the current date, month, and year. Xia suspensefully replies that the year is 2021, September 3rd and asks Wang why. Wang, keeping a relaxed face, tells her that it's nothing but, in the inside, he is confused and thinks that it is a big problem. He realizes he is 10 years in the past, the beginning of the apocalypse, the change from the old era to the new era. On this day, a destroyer named Unknown Alien Meteorite landed in different areas of the Earth, and because of poor adapting ability to the environment, many people fell into slumber and over 50% of the world's humans turned into zombies or monsters. But very quickly, the alien technology reached Earth, generated several evolution zones, and put evolution crystals there that allowed humans to evolve. 
Wang was one of the people who obtained the evolution crystal and evolved. Even though Wang became an evolver, he just got strengthened in physique and can fight with the destroyer. But wait, he remembers something. His ability to travel back in time 10 years earlier after he dies and with the future body's physique he could. Suddenly Xia shouts at Wang to look at the sky. The light had become stronger, even in the Arctic, a bright northern light like that was never seen before. Wang confirms it. It is the evolution era. If he remembered correctly, the world's first seven evolution areas, East Asia's only evolution area, is about to descend on Shangdu City's north area. Xia says the lights were so pretty and would have been nicer if it was not such a situation. Wang calls Captain Xia Ran, mentioning her as Shangdu Military Area's Captain, Shangdu National Defend Military School's Year 2 student, Xia Ran. He further introduces himself as Wang Jia from Shangdu University's history course and Year 2 student. Xia Ran is skeptical about him being a student. She is in disbelief that a student with liberal arts would have such skills. She asks to see his student ID. Wang replies that the ID is in the car, but Xia thinks that he is bluffing and there is no ID. She thinks that it is rare to see a normal year 2 student driving a car, and he also asked a police officer to support him and had a weapon with him. He says that the student ID is not important. She thinks that she knows it. He is not the student. She tells him that he is a military higher up and came to do a secret mission. And since he came on a secret mission, he is faking his identity. Wang shows her his ID, and she is in disbelief. Wang takes Xia's ID and tells her to hurry up since they need to leave quickly. He asks if she came in her car. Xia is surprised to see a student who is tougher than a military officer. Wang gets into the car, thanks Xia, and says that he will leave first. She asks him what he means since it is her car. He tells her that he is heading to the north area, where it is very dangerous for her. He informs her that all the zombies in the area have been killed and advises her to retreat to a shelter. Xia is suspicious of him because it's not normal for a student to go to the north area where the zombie outbreak started. She thinks that Wang must be a serve with a higher rank than him, but if he doesn't want to admit it, she's fine with that. She tells Wang that as a military officer, it's her duty to protect the citizens, so she must follow him. However, Wang ignores her and says goodbye. She begs him not to go, and he slowly slides down the car window and asks her if she knows how to drive. Xia drives the car as Wang has forgotten how to drive the old type of car, and military vehicles are even more different. She thinks to herself that he must be a higher up in the military who doesn't need to drive. Wang stares at Xia, and she becomes shy, wondering why he is looking at her. She shakes, thinking he is staring at her. Wang tells her to stop the car and get out. Xia remembers her earlier statement that he didn't know how to drive. He tells her that he has learned how to drive. She realizes that he wasn't staring at her, but was learning how to drive, and she had thought something else. Wang apologizes, saying that they might be late at the speed they are going. She asks him late for what, and he starts driving really fast. Xia is terrified of the speed, and she says that even a 30-year veteran driver won't dare to drive like that. She questions how he can drive even though he just learned. He tells her to hold on tight as he is going to show her the new world. Xia loads her gun and says that if they had succeeded in the breakthrough earlier, they could have come to the car and refilled their ammo. Suddenly, a body appears before them, startling Xia. Wang tells Xia to stay alert as the north area suffered the most, and the closer they get to it, the more dangerous it will be. She takes the order as if he were her commanding officer. She asks why Wang is going to the north area, and if he has any family members there. He says he does not have any family. Xia feels sad for him and says that their mission was to investigate, but they encountered citizens who were surrounded by zombies, so they changed their goals. The northern lights appeared two hours later after the zombies appeared, and the higher-ups felt suspicious about it, so they told Xia's team to investigate. Wang thinks that the appearance of the northern lights was a sign of the evolution area. Last time, he missed the nearest evolution area, and this time, he must seize the chance to get the evolution crystal. He asks Xia for the time, and she looks at his phone, telling him that it's 4.50 pm, and even though there is no signal, the time is accurate. 
He realizes that, during 5 p.m., the whole evolution area will start to evolve, and during that time, there will be a force field in the 10-meter range beneath the light, preventing people from entering. He says that they are changing the route. She is confused. He steers another way. She says that there are zombies in front and hitting them will reduce their speed. Wang asks if the car has a machine gun. She says yes, but she is terrified and thinking of what he wants. The zombies start getting shot at, and Wang is on top of the car using the machine gun. She is shocked that even though there are so many zombies, the car has not even hit a single one. He asks Captain Xia not to touch the wheel and only step on the accelerator. She agrees that there is a turning path in front. She just presses the accelerator and drives straight through the turning. The phone shows it is 4.59 p.m. and 59 seconds. The clock hits 5 p.m. The light starts dispersing. The car crashes on the sand. Xia gets off the car. She is confused as to what is going on, as the whole city became a desert. Wang says that they have reached just in time. Xia asks for what, and then she sees something and is surprised. In front, there is a statue of Sphinx and Pyramid. She asks what is going on. Wang tells her to listen carefully. Suddenly a voice echoes in everyone's brain. Wisdom civilization, protection plan activated, evolution area had been formed. Wang is happy that he made it, but Xia and the other humans inside the area are confused. The voice continues, area, Egypt, environment change ratio, 45% change into crystal protector, protector, sphinx, survival notification, insight into character of god, evolution area release condition, absorb evolution crystal. Wang explains that the voice transferred into everyone's brain. Wang says that Xia must have also heard this power, which lets people obtain an evolution crystal's trail area. The surrounding area has been isolated from the world. Xia is totally confused and says oh. There are three ways to leave. One is defeating Evolution Crystal Guardian. Two, a certain amount of humans can enter a 5 meter range of Evolution Crystal. Number three, Evolution must have certain survivors, and I need to reach a fixed amount. Wang confirms it, raising his hand, and explains that each of those conditions can release the Evolution area, if not, no one can leave. All the rules he had heard from those who have experienced it in his past life. Now that he had heard it himself, he thinks that he has a better chance to obtain the crystal and become an evolver. He further thinks that the whole world's first batch of seven evolution areas creates evolvers, known as the starter generation, most of whom became popular in the spotlight, some even being human's trump card. People are starting to panic. Some think that all this is a joke, and they just want to go to their wife and kids in the central area. One of them shouts, why obtain superpowers? If the individual reciting the term is so powerful, that individual can go kill the zombies outside. If not, they at least ask for the location of the evolution crystal. Suddenly, the bus rushes, and zombies are all over the bus. The bus keeps moving and hits some sort of barrier. A person yells to save him from inside the bus. Xia notices that and calls student Wang Zhe. Wang says that he can save, but it must be within his combat ability range. Xia agrees and follows Wang to the crashed bus. As they approach the bus, the ancient guardians of the desert, the Sphinx, seem to come to life, their glowing eyes fixed on Wang and Xia with an eerie intensity. Zombie, the teacher had become a zombie. A girl named Zui Yu is pushed to fight. The girl with the yellow hair had pushed her sending her to fight saying that she is from the countryside. Zui Yu is standing bravely in front and from the back the girl is blaming that it is Zui Yu's fault because if she hadn't brought them in the bus, none of this would have happened. The zombie teacher rushes to them, the group of girls are terrified. Zui Yu hits the zombie and asks other girls to come and help her. The other girls help Zui to push the zombie, the zombie struggles. While pushing the zombie, the blonde hair girl looks outside of the bus. She tries to run away from there abandoning her friends, but another zombie arrives at the door. She shouts and sobs, she pushes the zombie toward the other and tries to run away, it startles the other friends and the zombie they were holding gets freed. Zui is scared of the situation, suddenly the bus window breaks in front of her eyes and Wang enters. The sword is driven through the head of the zombie. 
Wang is in front of Zua, she looks at Wang and her face seems troubled. A zombie was going to jump on Wang, he swiftly dodges it and beheads the zombie. Easily kicked and shattered the public bus's mirror, then killed two zombies, Zua thinks that he is very strong. The girl is relieved that they are saved. Wang stares at Zua and tries to think where he has seen her before. Xia Ran enters the bus and introduces herself to the girls as the military area's captain. She tells the girls that the place is very dangerous and asks the girls to follow them. One of the girls says that there is still another person with them who is not there. The blonde haired girl is running at full speed away from the bus, suddenly a huge stone crushes the blonde haired girl, the other girls see that from the bus and are terrified of the situation. Xia is looking from the bus, the Sphinx statue was moving. The Sphinx moves the bus and shouts at them with a high voice. All the people inside the bus cover their ears. Wang thinks that there is a single protector, and this protector is the easiest type of monster to fight. One of the girl cries that they are going to become flat with the bus after being stomped on by it. Wang tells the girl not to worry and sit down and open a book. Xia is confused that Wang asked them to read a book, Wang tells Xia that to do as he says as there is no time to explain. The Sphinx inserts its nail on the top of the bus and with his nails and tears down the bus. The Sphinx looks down at them with the glowing red eyes, it sees that they are reading the books. From afar that people are discussing that the people inside the bus are going to die now that they have been discovered by the monster. They thought now that Wang and Xia went to save them they are going to die with them. Wang is reading a history book and that high school book was memorable for him. The monster seeing them read, left the bus. The people are in disbelief that the monster left them, and they question why that monster did not kill them. Wang closes the book and tells others that they can now stop reading the books. They are relieved, Xia Ran looked out from the window. Xia is happy that the monster left, and she praises Wang. Wang tells the girls not to worry as the monster will not attack them for a while. Xia asks Wang what is going on and why the monster did not attack them. Wang explains that it is very simple. She asks if Xia remember the survival notification that appeared in their brain. Xia doesn't remember but Zhuo remember the survival notification, insight into the character of God. Xia kind of remember that there was that sentence too, but since there were so many details after that she forgot. Wang further explained that the God is protector Sphinx statue, and he asks what comes in their head when they think of Sphinx. Monster Sphinx it gives every human it encounters a quiz, what monster walks on four legs in the morning, afternoon and two but in the evening walks on three. Xia Ran tells that the answer is human and those who cannot answer will get eaten. Zuan explains that in the end of the story, a sage guesses the answer and the Sphinx dies from falling off the cliff because of the embarrassment. So, insight into the character of God meant respect and fear, knowledge and smart people. Wang agrees and says that the best way to show one's knowledge and wisdom is to read the book. Suddenly Wang realizes something, the books belonged to the girls and even without him they would have had a chance to survive. Wang remembers now, no wonder that she looked familiar to him. Zua feeling shy, thanks Wang for saving them. Wang tells it is nothing and tells her that he is a graduate from second high. Wang remembered that among the whole world's few starter revolvers, Zui Yuqing was one of them and had the Storm Empress title, she can directly interfere with crazy weather which will cause disaster and apocalypse, she was also one of the important leaders of Huaxia in the future. That type of multi-element power allows her to have reputation internationally after a disaster. As for why Zui Yuqing is strong, it was because she obtained the strongest first batch evolution crystal and currently Wang also had the same chance as her. Zua asks Wang if he is her senior. Wang says yes and says that the uniform is no longer crappy blue and white one and Zua looked great on the current uniform. Xia interferes their conversation and asks them to get back to the topic, since now they had a way to deal with the Sphinx. Wang disagrees, as the survival notification is only for survival and once they try to take the evolution crystal, it is no longer counted as survival. Xia is confused. It is already night, it was dark outside, the roads had no electricity, it seemed to Xia that they can stay in the safe bus for the night. Wang says that they have to leave the place as the place had blood which will soon make the zombies come again, and the bus had no food and water and staying there they cannot replenish their energy and what the most important part was that they were already targeted. Xia asks about being targeted. 
Wang replies since just now, there are five people using binocular to stare at them, it is obvious that they plan to do something to them. Xia asks if it is fine if they are seeing us. Wang is skeptic about if it is only about to see them because according to the least condition of the evolution area, the people should either obtain the crystal, kill protector or evolution area must have certain survivors and it needed to reach a fixed amount. Wang asks if they understand as there is no need to kill protector but if only the certain amount of people die, the mission can also be completed. Wang warns them to not only think they are purely just watching, if they don't have the courage to kill people then Wang asks not to expose themselves. The girls are in fear and cannot talk for a while. Wang tells now that it is dark, he asks the two girls to follow him, and they need to know that in apocalypse, sometimes humans are more dangerous than zombies. The other two girls with a cry face ask to let them tag along too. Wang says sure. Since their presence was too low Wang almost forgot about them. Wang walks in front killing any zombies if they appear and the other girls follow him. Night sand wind was good for them as it can disrupt zombie smell judgment which will make them safer. Xia asks Wang where they are, Wang replies that on the next turning point they should turn right since that area has a small supermarket they are heading there. Xia says that she knows a larger supermarket that is closer, and they just need to take left on the next turning point, Wang tells Xia that he knows that too, but they cannot go there. Xia asks for the reason why they are bothering going far when there is a larger supermarket with a lot more resources. Wang says that there are many people in large supermarket, along with many zombies and zombies are mostly young teenagers and adult ones, but the opposite was true for the small supermarket. Although small supermarket is small, Wang explains that it had enough resources for the five of them. Most importantly, the structure was also good. The small supermarket is a residential building, so there are two entrances, it is convenient to leave once anything happens. And the supermarket does not have glasses, only a roller shutter door and pulling it down would not let zombies discover them. Zhuo praises Wang saying that he is not only strong but is also smart, who can deal with two zombies at once. Xia smirks that Zhuo is surprised that Wang can deal with two zombies. She then starts to boast that when she met Wang for the first time, he fought around 50 zombies at the same time which shocks Zhuo. Wang sighs, as he was teaching them about the apocalypse survival, but they were praising him instead. They are almost at the local store. Xia says everyone that the store is just in front and that they should walk, but Wang stops them. Wang thinks that old zombies are weaker, but they are easier to be infected, streets don't even have a zombie, so it meant. Wang tells everyone that no matter what happens they should not step forward. Wang moves ahead, he stops, closes his eyes and senses something, it was a monster. Wang looks at the abandoned car and says, stop hiding come out. The car starts moving, Xia and Zhou are terrified. The monster carries the car. Xia tries to shoot the monster and asks Zhuo to run away. Wang says Xia to save the bullets as shooting the monster is useless. The monster throws the car at Wang, he dodges. Wang warns other that battle sound might attract other zombies, so they should protect themselves. The monster roars, Wang thinks if the monster has mutated rank, but no not yet. The monster again jumps towards Wang. The monster hit the area Wang was standing on. Both Xia and Zhuo call Wangja but Wangja was already on another place. The monster tries to attack again and Wang dodges that again and teases the monster that it missed again. Xia is worried as one hit from the monster easily destroyed the car and if Wangja gets hit, he might die and even though Wang dodges every time, he has not attacked it yet, Xia thought that maybe even Wangja cannot handle this time's enemy, Wang lands on a car. Xia thinks that Wang is in trouble as there is no landing spot near him. The monster jumps toward Wang. Wang was done playing, while the monster jumps toward him, and he slices the monster's hand. Xia was surprised to see that Wang cut the monster's hand, she thinks, if it was easy for him why did not, he attack earlier. Wang looks at his sword, Xia is confused why Wang is looking at the sword even though the monster is not defeated. The angered monster hurls towards Wang. Wang takes a stance, then he cuts off the monster. The monster's head is sliced. Swiftly killed the two girls are surprised seeing that. Wang feels like something is flowing into his body. His energy had recovered, and he seemed to have become stronger. Was it the effect of the evolution crystal, unexpected for Wang it had such uses there? 
Wang could go from D-rank to C-rank after a year with physical strength with that kind of speed. The two girls shouting Wang's name run towards him. Xia says that Wang had stared him as she thought Wang was in a tough situation but in the end, Wang killed it swiftly. Zhuo asked why she did not kill the monster from the start. Wang explains that it was not that simple to understand why he asks them to look at the corpse. Xiao looks dissatisfied, Zhuo looks at the corpse trying to understand, and the other two girls are almost sick seeing the sliced monster. Xia asks Zhuo if she is not scared. Zhuo tells that she is afraid, but it was useless to be scared, rather she would recognize and understand the enemy earlier. Wang thinks that even Xia Ran, who is from the army, hasn't yet adapted, but Zhuo Yu had already overcome such things as expected from the future leader of Hua Xia. Wang holds Zhuo's hand and tells her not to be scared as he will be with her, Zhuo is a bit shy and startled. He takes her near the corpse of the monster and asks Xia Ran to come over too. He asks them to look and tell what layer that was. It was bone, more accurately it was the outer bone. Zui is shocked and asks how that is possible within a day for a body structure to change. Wang explains it not only changed but became harder too. Zui sees that the toughness is similar to metal. That was the reason the bullets were useless, the same was the condition for his sword, if he had forcefully hit it, his sword would have broken instead, Wang explained. Luckily for Wang he had discovered that hitting the joint area was still effective. Xia Ran said that she needs to quickly report it to the headquarters. Wang tells Xia that they should wait until they leave from there alive. Wang further explains that because the big fella had occupied the area, they can smoothly walk to there, but now that it had died, other zombies will start to gather. So, they needed to hurry up. At night the zombies were roaming outside, inside the group had lit a candle, Wang says that he found 50 candles, and each can light for about one hour. Candles were rare resource, so they needed to save it, they needed to get dinner and try and finish within one hour. Wang says that they will eat the supplies closest to the expiry date. Xia says that they should not touch foods like kin food, compressed biscuits etc. She had learned it in military before, the neighbor house was designed to temporarily have gas tank, so she asks to leave the cooking to them. Wang asks if Xia has been in a kitchen before and offers to help. Zhuo agrees with Xia and tells Wang to rest. Wang agrees. Zhuo and Xia had done the cooking and they called everyone to eat. Wang praises the looks of the food. He gets a taste of something. Zhuo asks if something is wrong with the food, Wang says that nothing is wrong with the food and confirmed that if they had added that. It was spices. Wang thinks that in the future spices will be even more luxurious than gold, and it was the black market's special product. For Wang, the food was very nice, and it had been 10 years since he had last tasted something so nice. Xia asks why Wang is only eating vegetables and asks Wang to eat more meat so that he can replenish his energy. Wang says that it is fine and that he wants to eat vegetables and they should eat more. Wang thinks that in apocalypse, land is less, people focus on livestock and water. Fresh vegetables can't be found, thinking of using medicine to obtain vitamins is tough in the future. Xia thinks that Wang not only protected them but is acting like that he liked vegetables and letting them eat meat. She thinks that Wang Zhu is way too kind and is touched. Zhuo asks Xia why she is crying and asks if the food is that good. The candle is almost out, and they have finished eating as well. Wang tells to clean the utensils tomorrow as it is not worth it to waste candles. Wang finds blankets at the place and asks the girls to take as they want as he did not want any. Wang tells the girls to squeeze in sleep and goes to the corner. Xia calls An and says Wang that he did not need to go at the corner to sleep and that they had something they wanted to ask, Wang is confused. Xia asks Wang to talk more about the zombies and the reason why Wang is so strong. Zhuo also placed her curiosity on the subject. Wang then tells it is because of evolution, the girls did not know what that is. Wang then starts to explain, he says whether it is him or the big zombie, the only reason why they are so strong was because of the evolution. For zombies, they evolve differently but are distributed into five sections. Wanderer. Mutated rank. Terror rank. Disaster rank. And catastrophe rank. Among the rank there are also special evolution and unique presence. Most are wanderer they are the starting zombie without many changes. 
As time passes, their size will increase, hand will grow claw, like beast will sharp fong and claws, strength and speed will increase. The big zombie from earlier was wanderer rank, rare in desert like these, unique type. Rare type will make same rank zombies get scared and force them to run away. Xia is scared thinking if the normal human can really survive in the apocalypse. Wang tells it is hard, but he had a good news. What? It is almost dawn. Wang is walking in front of the group, Xia follows with a knife and Zhuo follows with a stick in her hand. The scene goes back to last night. Xia is asking if the good news he meant was. Wang says yes, the humans were going to evolve including Xia and Zhuo. Wang says that Xia and Zhuo might also can feel it as normal people cannot last after experiencing one day of that. Zhuo says if it is the crystal's effect on them. In order to survive they needed to make use of this and tomorrow they are moving towards the crystal, and at the same time train the girls needed to train so Wang explains that as a training they are going to fight the zombies. Xia and Zhuo are kinda scared but accept that, but the other two girls did not want that as it is too dangerous. Wang tells them it is okay and asks them to stay where they are. Wang had again forgotten about those two girls, he did not plan to bring them along. Back to the desert, a zombie appears in front of them. Wang asks the girls to stop and since the zombie was too big, he tells the girls that he would handle it. He then cut the head of the zombie. Lesser than before, Wang again gains energy from the zombie. Xia and Zhuo are surprised of Wang's strength. He looks around and sees some zombies. He tells the girls to handle the two weak wanderers in front. Xia says okay, but Zhuo does not utter a word. Wang thinks if Zhuo is afraid judging from her reaction. Was it because Wang was too protective that made Zhuo relied on Wang too much? But it was also for her to be scared as she was a normal high school student. But no, she was going to be one of the future leaders of Hua Xia. Wang approaches Zhuo and tells her not to be scared. Now is the dawn, the day and night change will let zombies unable to adapt decreasing their combat ability. Wang assures Zhuo that he will be by their side, and he will help her if she faces any danger. Zhuo is a bit shy, she tells Wang that she will work harder. Zhuo thinks to herself that Wang will become one of the leaders in the apocalypse and she cannot run away now, if she does, she would not even have a qualification to stand beside him. The zombies were coming. One of the zombies attacks Ya, she manages to block it, she grabs it by the arm and pins down the zombie. She then stabbed the zombie's head. Xia was relieved. The other zombie was going towards Zua, she is barely managing to dodge the zombie. She sees a opening and stabs the zombie's chin. She is nervous and scared. Wang tells her that it must feel bad and that he understands how she feels. Zua tells, the feeling to ending one's life was not a good one. As yesterday they were still normal human. Wang pats Zua's head and tells her that she has done well. But that tells him to remember that in Apocalypse, she should not even pity people, furthermore zombies. Zua says okay. The sun starts to rise, it was morning, Wang says that they should continue moving forward. Xia say that they should move to a higher place with great vision to observe the overall situation. Wang points at a building and says that building will be good for observation. They go to the higher floor of the building. Xia asks Wang why they choose the construction building and not the nearby office building. Wang explained that the city's office building might have many young people, when apocalypse occurred, so there will be many zombies. The zombie encounter will be lot less in a construction building compared to the office building which might contain hundreds of them. Xia says that she still has not adapted to the apocalypse mindset. Wang sees something and asks Xia to look in that direction. Xia looks there, she sees the Sphinx statue and the bus they were in, the bus was burned and destroyed. Zhuo suspects it was someone who was looking for them. Wang adds that since they could not find them, they might have burned the bus. Evil personality. Luckily, they had listened to Wan and left early, but it is just they don't know who they were. Wang says that they will find them soon. Wang again point at a direction, there were a group of people there trying to rob the crystal. Something was shining at the top of the pyramid. Xia is about to tell what the light is, but then Wang thinks it is the evolution crystal symbolic, but according to Wang it had never appeared before. 
Rogue people on their bikes are racing towards the evolution crystal. A biker shouts that the monster did not move. The leading biker thought that the statue allowed them and even the god is helping him and after getting that evolution crystal, the world will be his. Xia looks troubled thinking that the evolution crystal is going to fall in the hands of evil people. A person throws dynamite towards the sphinx. It blasts on the face of the sphinx, the sphinx looks furious from the attack, it roars out loud, a sand tornado seemed to appear out of nowhere, the sphinx statue was still there. The detonator seemed useful, they were going to throw more. The sphinx is hit again. One of the people calls out that there are two monsters. The one they were hitting was a fake. The sphinx laugh at them. They take out their guns and start firing at the monster. Xia is surprised that those people had guns. The previous guy threw a dynamite at the sphinx again but even after those bombarding and guns, the monster came back to its original form as if nothing had happened. The monster had an undying body. They thought that they cannot win again that monster and try to quickly run away. They run shouting that they don't need the crystal anymore. But the monster went after them. People looking from a distance questioned if the monster of that size and undying body can even be defeated. Xia tries to ask Wang Zhe in this type of situation what they should do, but Wang was not there. He was racing toward the monster in a motorcycle. The people watching know that he was another idiot seeking death trying to get the crystal. The blue hair guy recognized Wang as the same person who rescued the bus. The Sphinx saw Wang, Wang stopped his bike and told the big kitty to come and get him. The Sphinx glared toward Wang and raced towards him. The blue haired guy is in shock that Wang wanted to fight the monster, the red haired guy though that Wang was a reckless idiot and would die for sure. Xia tell that since Wang dared to go he is going to be fine, but both Xia and Zhuo are worried about the situation. The Sphinx raises its claws, Wang accelerated the bike and draws his sword out. He manages to dodge the monster and go past it. The spectators are surprised that he went over there and did not die. The monster uses its power with which he created sand lions to chase after Wang. Zhuo analyses the monster, it could summon things, and they were faster than a locomotive. The sands lions were about to catch up with Wang just then he suddenly applies brake and stops. The red hair person said that Wang had given up. But the blue haired person disagreed. Zui is surprised and wonders why Wang has stopped. Xia sees something. Wang turns the bike and with the sword ready he races toward the sand lions, he manages to slice the head of the sand lions. The red hair person was surprised and the blue haired person wonders who Wang is. Xiao with a happy and surprised face speaks that she had never expected Wang to use the sword skill while riding the motorcycle. Zhuo points out that the pyramid is shining. The Sphinx seems to have gathered more energy from the crystal. Wang senses someone, he then looks back to see that the Sphinx is catching up. Zhuo notices that the speed of the Sphinx had become much faster. Xiao worries that the Sphinx can soon catch up to Wang if it goes on. Wang then picks up the detonator from before. The spectators wonder why Wang took the detonator. They had no ideas as he always exceeded their judgment, they just stood there and watched as they didn't want it guess wrongly like an idiot. Wang then took the detonator and threw it in front of him. An entrance opened up, it was a subway entrance. Wang then told the big kitty by and entered into the tunnel. Zhuo was relieved that Wang was safe now. Xia asks Zhuo if Wang told them where to meet him when he left. Zua tells that she does not know as Wang left in a rush so staying where they should be the right thing to do. Zua asks Xia why she is suddenly asking that. Xia explains that she is happy that Wang is alright, but they needed to consider their next step. Zua asks why, Xia then explains further that their location has been exposed as someone was using telescope to look at them, and Xia suspects that they are the same group of bastards from earlier. They were probably the ones that burned the bus too, what's more is that they had guns and they were ruthless people. Zua then confirms what they are thinking of. Xia says that she thinks the safe is after what they saw Wang's performance, they might want to recruit Wang, so he can help them obtain the evolution crystal and considering that Wang Zhe might refuse, those bad people might think of kidnapping them and threaten Wang Zhe. Considering all the facts, they decide to leave quickly. They decide to move as fast as they can and move back to the supermarket. 
The blue-haired person runs, he reaches to someone and tells him that he has found those people from the bus. The person looks like the leader of the group. He asks if they are sure. Blue-haired boy confirms saying that even though there are two less girls, they are definitely the people from the bus. The leader thinks that tossing coin to decide who went is right, if not he might be the one to get crushed. He needed to threaten that guy with the sword to help them so that they can have a chance to obtain the crystal. He orders his men to come with him and capture those two girls. Xia and Zua are running as fast as they can. Xia says that they will take the small road, otherwise the in people will catch up with them quickly. But Zua says that smaller road might have many zombies, Xia tell that they don't have much time, and as Wang said an apocalypse human are scarier than zombies. They stop at the alleyway they hear something. One of the bikers shouts where the girls are. The gang start badmouthing each other, the girls put their hands on their mouth and hide. The leader stops, he then talks to himself saying that the girls don't have vehicles, so even running they won't be able to reach far. Xia and Zua are talking about leaving the area as they are starting to search the area, Zua so asks where they should go, Xia says that the alley is narrow, and it is good for hiding so they can hide there. Xia tells Zua to keep quiet. They quietly start walking through the narrow way. There is a knock on the door. The leader of the biker gang hears something. Xia looks at Zua, she tells her that she is not the one who did that. One of the boys see them and asks to capture them. Xia and Zua notice that they have been found. Wang is riding the motorcycle, but he feels that something is wrong, the guardian had become stronger. This difficulty was not for starter evolution area. According to Wang's past life's level distribution D-rank even normal people can survive, and C-rank can let normal people be in danger, B-rank can let evolved person be in danger, A-rank can annihilate all of the evolution team. Wang wonders how Zuo obtained the evolution crystal in such condition. Wang realizes something, the problem was not with Zuo, but with him. Those creepy eyes and his red evolution crystal's reaction, and crystal letting him absorb the zombie's strength, he was being treated like a zombie. Evolution area's motive is to let human obtain ability to fight against zombie. At the same time there are different guardians that deals with zombie and humans. The one that gained Wang Astaire and boosted Sphinx power was the second guardian that is hidden inside the pyramid. Wang understands now, he thinks of getting out of that place and come up with another plan. Wang notices that the place he is in has electricity. Also, there are many zombies in there. The leader orders his guys to catch them. They move forward to catch the girls. Xia shoots a guy. She warns that she is the captain of the military area, and she has authority to kill people. She orders the guys to stop, or they will pay the consequence. The place is silence for a while. They don't care about the military as they are already criminals, they are only seeing two pretty girls. The blue-haired guy supports with firepower and tells to capture them. The girls try to run another way, Xia shoots them and asks Zua to quickly run. They run into a dead end. Xia is reloading her gun. Leader tells his men that girls are out of ammo and orders his men to go and capture them. He curses at the girls saying that he will play with them to death. Xia is standing with a dagger and the gang is laughing at them. They hear a sound, it is the sound of engine, someone riding a motorcycle coming at them from behind, no not behind from it was above. Wang comes in his bike and hits a member. Leader asks what is happening in front. All the boys back off from the alley, all scared. One bad guy tells them that it is the person who fought the monster. Zuo warns Wang that they want to capture them. Xia asks Wang to be careful as they have guns. Wang asks who those guys were and why they are looking for him. The gang leader introduces himself as the North City area's boss and since Wang's skills are not bad, he wants Wang to work with him obediently or else he says that he will kill Wang. Wang instead tells the leader to work with him and cooperate. The North's boss is furious to what Wang says. Wang blames that after the disaster humans cannot unite because of guys like them and refers to them as the trash that should not exist in this world. The North's boss with an evil face that shout that good people get bullied, kind people are killed, but only evil people like him can survive. Wang says that the more chaotic the world becomes the more dangerous evil person gets, but when humans unite then everyone can survive. 
Wang furiously tells that letting people like them will only cause humanity to go extinct. The gang members are confused to why Wang's eyes are red. The leader's orders to just shoot Wang down. But before the people could realize Wang disappears from their sight and slices the throat of the people who were in front of him. The leader shouts to shoot everything. Wang furiously starts to cut everyone in his way. The gang leader is scared and thinks if it goes on, everyone will be killed. Zhuo could feel that Wang had gotten even more stronger. Zhuo sees that, the leader of the gang is coming toward the girls and to force them to become his hostages. Since Wang is too far Xia thinks that he is too far to help them. The leader run toward the girls but before he could reach them his subordinate gets shot, then the leader is also shot. Done from this person's hand was gone. His head is sliced before he could even realize. Wang has the gun, the bad guys underestimated him. The leader was still alive. Wang asks the North's boss why he should let him off. The North's boss came up with a suggestion, he says that he will flip a coin and let God decide his fate, he asks Wang how it sounds. Wang tells him that it was an interesting suggestion. He asks Wang to give him a coin. Wang shoots him and tells him next time. The girls come towards Wang, Wang asks them if they are alright. They say that they are fine, but they are out of bullets. Wang asks them to take the bullets from them and tell them they should go back since zombies will adapt to the sunlight soon. Xia realizes that the sound earlier was made by zombies. Wang tells them to prepare for return. Xia says that from this criminal organization, their others are in nearby area and asks Wang what to do. Wang tells that when he came out of the station the zombies were also lured out. Those zombies would have adapted to the light and will have encountered them already. At the hideout the people left encounter zombies, they are puzzled where the others are. The zombies attack them, and they start shouting. The group return back to the supermarket. The two girls are so happy that them finally came back. Wang explains that they came back because of some incident. The girl question if they are carrying guns? Wang tells the girls that they just had a little fight with some people. Xia and Zhu sarcastically tell little fights huh? Wang Juice drinks in peace. Xia says that those guns should be the jail guards and the officer's gun, she guesses that it was all her companion's weapon. Xia says that luckily, they had killed them otherwise many more people would have suffered. Wang tells that because of that they have to kill those criminals and evil people otherwise the danger will be brought along will be far worse than they can imagine. Xia says okay but still thinks kill? Xia thinks about what Wang said to her when she first met him. He called himself a cleaner and thinks about the connections between them. Zhuo says that she already knows that part and asks Wang to tell them his part of the situation. Wang says that he has made some progress on his side. He puts down the can of juice and says that Sphinx is the greatest enemy right now for them. Zhuo adds that apart from its large size it has an immortal body. Wang says that they should not focus on it and tells that there is another Sphinx maybe another fake on the other side of the pyramid. Xia agrees and to get the evolution crystal, they need to go to the pyramid, but it is hard to shake off that sphinx. They discuss about the two sphinx. Two sphinx, Xia is confused, isn't the other one fake? Zhuo shows her curiosity too. When the bandits fought and used detonator it hit have an effect, but when had the attack become ineffective, Wang asks. Zhuo replies when the sand sphinx appeared. That was the issue. Xia is curious if it's his main body or did it turn itself into sand. Wang proposed a theory, treating them as containers. What if the true life force is like the drink inside the can, which can be poured into container, of course the container needed to be a hole, and this sphinx seems, it requires sometimes to recover. Zhu then understands and says that while facing the sphinx, they need to destroy the sphinx statue behind at the same time. Wang says that it is correct and considering that it has recovery ability to destroying that it won't take too long. Xia is skeptical as that way was too hard and that pyramid can strengthen them. She thinks if they can bomb the pyramid which can make it unable to strengthen the sphinx. Wang says not to do it. Zhuo and Xia ask why. Wang explains that inside the pyramid there is a monster more scarier than the sphinx. Xia and Ran are shocked hearing that and ask about the monster. A monster much stronger.
Wow! The other two girls are also shocked hearing that. That monster doesn't attack normal humans as long as it is not provoked, until the evolution crystals obtained by people. And during that time, the monster will come out and slaughter until the number fits the requirement. It was a shocking news. From Wong's previous life, he knows that in this time, only three slots are available for evolution crystal. The two girls ask others to get the evolution crystal as their life depended on it. No one is willing to let the slaughter occur, but Wang had a plan, but is it something that he should do alone? Xia disagrees, she is also counted as manpower, she exaggerates she won't be afraid of the protector. Probably. Zhu counts herself in as the manpower after she learns how to fight. Wang did not have to do it all by himself as they also had it in them to survive until the end, Wang only had to tell them the plan and Xia and Zhu were promised to do as much as they can. Wang was pumped so he is looking forward to obtaining the evolution crystal together. They cheer to leave the place and go after the evolution crystal together. It was time to eat, the girls had prepared a delicious sandwich. Wang had explained the plan and three days later they were going to take action on the plan. Wang had only strength type but after his rebirth, he gained another type of power. He started gaining powers after killing the zombie and red color crystal had been formed within his body, it had become like a battery which could be charged by killing the zombies. This crystal can be used to strengthen himself and even detonate it and use it for strengthening himself. He has used some powers facing those gangsters, but to face the sphinx that standard won't be enough. He needed a stronger red color crystal to fight with that monster. Wang planned to recharge the stone fully in three days. Wang after eating, stands up to go kill some zombies. Zhuo also eats fast to go as quickly as she can. Xia too follows Wang and Zhuo to go kill the zombies. One of the girls makes salad for the group, but they were already gone. The zombie killing started, first day. Second day. Third day. The two girls are sleeping peacefully. Wang was also taking rest at the counter of the mart. Xia sees Wan while she is polishing her gun. Wang senses her and asks if Xia has something to tell, Xia wanted no Wang's identity as he seems to know too many things about the ongoing situation. Will Wang tell Xia? He is all quiet after the question. Xia tries to push the question away and tells Wang that she trusts him and trusts that he will fulfill his promise. Wang is confused. What promise is Xia talking about? Xia tells Wang the promise that everyone will leave the place together. Wang looks kind of emotional and again promises Xia that they will FO course. It is the dawn of the fourth day. The people are trying to return before the zombies adapt to sunlight. They are relieved and more efficient after the disappearance of the gangsters. There is a lone person riding motorbike, hopefully they are not one of the gangsters, but daring to be alone like that is that person seeking death? This person recognized the person in the bike. He rushes in to see what is going to happen. It is Wang riding the bike racing toward the Sphinx. The Sphinx does not delay making the sand lions. Wang takes out his sword and slashes all the lions. A detonator is thrown at the Sphinx? Is it even useful? Isn't that the waste of bombs? Barrage of bombs is thrown at the Sphinx. The person thinks that it is a waste of time and bombs, but what is going to happen, what could be his goal? His goal, his target was the Sphinx that is behind. The main Sphinx just kind of comes out from the smokescreen, but what does he seize? The Sand Sphinx is being hit with bombs. The main Sphinx looks furious seeing that. He uses a new technique, suddenly the sand from underneath his bike becomes a huge spike and tears his bike in two, but Wang keeps his cool, he pulls out his sword and jumps towards the Sphinx. He is planning to pierce through the Sphinx. He again jumps and inserts his knife into the Sphinx and slices it. The Sphinx cries out in pain, Wang has made him bleed but it is even more furious now. The Sphinx was bleeding out its life force. Suddenly. The Sphinx raises its claws at Wang, he reaches in his pocket for something. Even the monster is surprised, it was a handgun. The monster is all startled. There maybe is around 20 seconds until the recovery of the Sphinx. The main Sphinx regains his ground and glares but there is no one. Wang comes from the front and slices the eyes of the Sphinx.
still 15 seconds till recovery. Wang dodges each and every attack of the monster and starts inflicting damage to the monster. He pierces the monster's back. The monster cries in pain. Suddenly the sword could not pierce the sphinx, the pyramid was shining. Wang realized what was going on. Bang, a zombie is down, it was Xia. Just now did the pyramid become alive? Xia wondered. Xia found the train. The person sees that the sphinx had recovered. Wang lands in glares and curses the pyramid monster. Wang releases all the energy from his red crystal. The sphinx is also fully healed. They face each other, they both are as powerful. Who will win? The person is shocked seeing Wang fight the monster again even though it is immortal. Sphinx races to attack Wang. Yu Qing. Now. Wang yells. A remote control? It is controlling the drone. It has detonator attached to it. The detonator is released on top of the sand sphinx. It was Zua who was controlling the drone. The target had been bombed. The main sphinx looks pissed. Wang uses his power to slash the main sphinx. Had he won? No the sphinx was still not dead, even on that state it chased after Wang. Human may be fragile compared to that sphinx but. The sphinx should have though carefully. Wang was not planning to kill it, he knew he could not. His plan was to bring the monster to that pint. Tick tock. The monster heard something from underneath. Boom, the train came from beneath its feet and hit him hard on the head. The human intelligence, the power of steel. So many days of preparation had made the plan successful. Zuo looked very happy. But the train has opened up the station door, they were rushing out. Xia on a motorbike also arrives at the spot. Zuo also gets on the bike and they both rush toward the evolution crystal. The double eyes had not appeared, Wang was right. The two guardians were only for him. The sphinx was to deal with the leaving beings and the hiding monster work was to fight against the zombies. As Wang's red crystal could absorb zombies the pyramid treated Wang as zombie but now that the pyramid was focused on the zombies, he could get the crystal. A zombie grabs his leg. While trying to not be seen by the pyramid, the zombies had already caught up to him. But Wang could easily defeat them. Alright now, huh? A door, Wang though could that door be? There is something inside that. Is it the second guardian? Wang feels weak like he is lifting weight of 100 kilograms. His crystal's power feels suppressed. What are the zombies doing? Where are they going? Could they be being devoured by the monster? Wang feels light, like he is hypnotized. He feels like he should go into that hole. His body shakes, but he goes towards the hole. Inside the hole. Wang suddenly hears someone calling him, it was Xia and Zua. They tell Wang to not give up. Xia and Zua manage to bring back Wang's consciousness. The people on the ground, they are happy to see someone is so close to getting the crystal. Xia, Zua, and Wang reach the top of the pyramid, they are in front of the crystal. The strong light formed the crystal, it was healing their pain too. Wang reaches out to the crystal and grabs it he feels power flowing into his body. The crystal grants Wang ability. The ability he got was to extract the guardian's ability. For each guardian he could extract and claim their ability once as his own. Many evolution went the life and death to obtain an ability. Ability could be weak but Wang had received an evolution crystal. In higher level evolution area there are not just one monsters, he just needed to survive, then he could collect all sorts of ability. Wang uses his ability, there are two monsters in the area, Sphinx and the hidden monster. Using his power on the unknown pyramid seemed little risky. So he decides to use the ability on the Sphinx monster. He chooses Sphinx, it had two abilities, Sand Hunter and Double Clone. They seem very useful, so Wang tries to extract. It exploded. Wang did not get anything, it was a failure. He figured, his ability did not have 100% success rate, he still had another chance, moreover the ability can upgrade and with that the success rate increases too. 
he chooses the monster inside the pyramid. To Wine's surprise, it had over 20 abilities. Two of them were names, one was Call of the Soul, to call zombies and spirit soul blast which caused Wang to lose his consciousness. About 20 abilities but did not use them? Wang just chose from the two of them. He chooses an ability. This time it was successful. He had gained the spirit soul blast. He accepts the ability. The ability gets inside him. There is a huge surge of energy. Everyone looked happy and relieved. An officer shouts the target area detected high energy reflection with a danger standard unknown. Earthquake response detected in Bay City, a huge light appeared in the center of the city. A teen had reported abnormality about zombie and asked to retreat. The colonel orders them to stay at their post. He tells them not to be coward in the face of danger. Colonel is reluctant to find about the seven mysterious area's first abnormality. The huge light breaks Wang breathes in the air of the city. Xia asks if they are outside, Wang happily says yes, the evolution area had been removed, they had returned. Xia and Wang are talking to each other, where is Zhua? She was lying on the floor. She had a fever, Wang tells it was one of the reaction after obtaining an ability. Xia asks if Zhuo will get better. Wang explains that since each person's physique is different, body needs different amount of time to adapt. Xia asks what ability Wang got. Wang tells that he got spirit soul blast. Xia is confused, what? Wang says that it is the ability that affects the mental spirit. Wang thought that revealing the real ability could be problematic, so he hides the truth. Wang demonstrates his ability. He get behind Xia without her realizing and disappears again. Xia concludes the ability is teleportation, but it was not. Wang had just disturbed Xia's mental spirit and moved. As for the other effect of the ability he was not sure. A zombie tried to come at Wang from behind, he sliced it. He tells Xia that they should leave as the place is not safe, and they could encounter a second disaster. The fragment of the evolution crystal made the zombies to go berserk. Xia is worried about Zhuo's classmates, Wang tells her that they should be fine and they should take Zhuo and move. Xia holds Zhuo, Wang offered to help but Xia was levitating. Wang was confused. Xia explains that she got the ability to control gravity. According to Wang it was a high-level magic, it was a great start for them. Xia asks Wang where they are going. He suggests the medical area of the military on the south. South had many zombies, but they were ready to face the zombies. There are people running away. They were the people from before. Zombies were chasing them. One of them takes his axe out and swings at the zombie and tells everyone to run toward the other side, but there were many zombies on the other side too. They had survived the area, but were they going to die now? On the military side, the army were shooting the zombies, but the bullets were ineffective. The reinforcements sent by the army were requesting for reinforcement. Colonel says that the reinforcement will arrive soon and asks them the characteristics of the zombie. The line cuts off. Colonel orders whomever can fight to come to the front line to provide support. The colonel was going personally to the battle. They head on. Those people from before were crying out for help, they could do nothing but watch their doom. Suddenly there is an explosion. There was someone behind the smokes. It was Wang. One of them recognizes Wang. A zombie was going to attack. The guy with the axe hits the zombie on the head. He asks his fellow person to get up as they were going to be safe now. The zombies start walking towards Wang, his eyes are glowing red. The zombies stop on their path, others thought that the zombie also got scared, but that was not the case Wang was using his ability to control spirits. Wang in a flash manages to cut up all the zombies. The people come rushing toward Wang and ask him to take them with him. Another wave of zombies was coming, a car hits the zombies. Multiple car starts flying toward the zombies. People were shocked to see that. Xia carrying Zhuo was floating in the sky with the cars. People fought with the superpower, was she stronger than the sword guy? Xia comes towards the land. She trips and she falls. 
Wang catches Zua, seeing Xia's clumsiness, the people had second thought about her being more powerful. On the other side, the armies were trying their best to hold of the zombies, but the bullets seemed ineffective. The zombies had evolved. They could not even run away from this zombie. One of the mutated zombies catch Colonel's feet. Colonel tries to block it with his sword, but his sword broke apart. The monster throws him, he could not stand. The gap between his power and the zombies was too much. Wang enters the place, he looks around and sees the colonel. He recognized the colonel as his instructor. He had been saved by colonel in his past life, he had saved Wang from a monster, carried him to safety, trained him to become an evolutioner. As colonel had lost his arm in his past life, he could not enter the evolution area team. Colonel had sacrificed his life to save Wang. Colonel had been crippled in this fight? Colonel warns Wang and tells him not to come near. But Wang stood in front of the colonel facing the zombie. Wang thanks Colonel for the reminder but Wang no longer needed to run. He sliced the monster. He kills the monster, it was his turn to save his instructor. Colonel was shocked to see the monster being killed instantly. Colonel asks if Wang also has mutated body. Wang tells to call them the evolutioner as it sounded better. Colonel thanks Wang and asks for his name. Wang asks if Colonel's arm is fine. He say that it isn't broken so he should be fine. Wang and Colonel have conversation about his team, Colonel had come to investigate the special R. Wang tells Colonel not to build the base within the city as Shangdu city had high evolution speed and because of the population zombies are more prone to mutation. Colonel says that he understands and that he will inform the headquarter. In the future the Shangdu city was destroyed by the special zombie, even though Wang had not found it yet, the monster that destroyed the city might be evolving currently. Colonel looks to Wang but he was already gone. Wang was relieved that there will no longer be human bases on Shangdu City. Zhuyu Qing was safe, Xia Ran's ability was also strong and Colonel did not become crippled, Wang had exceeded his expectation. Wang could leave Shangdu City in peace, he waves Shangdu City by and leaves. Half a month later, at the outskirts of the Dongcheng City, two survivors Li Chang and Lu Xiaoyan are rushing on a vehicle. The weather was too cold, but the vehicle did not have enough oil to waste it on the air conditioner. If the car ran out of fuel, they might be in huge trouble. They planned to go to the next petrol station that is not far ahead. But the petrol station might have zombies in them. But they had to take a risk as there are lesser car in the highway and if they run out of petrol it might be harder for them to find a car. They reached the petrol station. The mart was in operating, there was someone inside. Lee says that it might be a zombie and takes out his knife. He asks his wife to keep watch as he goes to add fuel and warns if anything strange happens. The petrol station was quite quiet and no zombies were around there. Suddenly a zombie catches his feet, scarily tries to run away. He stumbles and falls down. The zombie knocks the knife out of Lee's hand and is about to eat him. Suddenly a sword cuts the zombie. Lee questions if he is saved. It was Wang Zhe. Li in disbelief asked who he was. Wang Zhe introduces himself as the acting store manager of the convenience store Dong Chang City No. 17 Road No. 717, Wang Zhe. He pours petrol over the monster and lights it. He welcomes those people inside the store. Lu asks if the fire will attract any zombies there. Wang replies maybe, but only the zombies within 100 meters would be attracted by the fire, but if the corpse was not disposed the zombies within km away will follow the smell of the blood. Lu understands that it was best to burn them. Li introduces himself and his wife to Wang. He tells him that they drove the vehicle to go back to their home but ran out of fuel, thinking no one was there they start fueling their tank and apologizes to Wang. Wang tells them it is fine, and they are not at first one to come to the store. Li thanks Wang for saving him and tells that Wang can take any of the resources from his vehicles as thanks. Wang says that he does not lack anything in the store but asks Li if he has heard any new information. Li proudly states that Wang has asked the right person as he has been to seven to eight cities and even the militaries want to find information from him. He asks Wang what is that he wants to know. 
Hearing about the military side Wang asks Li about the time he saw the army and the army's combat ability. Li tells Wang that he has much news about the military, Da Su City and Donghu City both have army but the strongest ones are in Shangdu City. He further explains that not only did Shangdu City army killed all the zombies but also recovered electricity and water and all the surrounding people ran towards there. He even exaggerates that there are people with superpower there, as there was sky was floating with cars and falling down like rain. Wang thinks that it might have been Xia's gravity control, as she might have improved after he left. Li continues to explain that Shangdu's army is strong but don't plan to attack city area instead spread the survivors at suburbs and also the weather there was very strange. During the day it was sunny bit afternoon there were lightning and even situation where the east side was sunny and the west was raining. It seems like Zui Yuqing was safe and army attached great importance to Song Yi's information. Wang could feel at ease now. He thanks Li for the information. He asks Lu what they are going to do if they encounter zombies again. Li explained that they are going back to their hometown to find their kids and would not do anything dangerous on the way there. Wang sees them as pitiful parents. Li explains that the surrounding of Dongqing city is way too dangerous, and he had escaped death the second time. Wang asks when the first time was. Li answered that it was on the last petrol pump around 10 kilometers away. They wanted to refill fuel at the last petrol station but just when they got off the vehicle he heard a zombie's roar and following that the mirror of the petrol station shattered. Luckily, they got in the vehicle otherwise they might have died there. Wang tells the couple to stay there for the night, but the couple refused as they were close to their hometown and might get a chance to meet their kids. Wang bids the couple farewell. Wang thinks about the zombie in the last petrol pump, 10 kilometers to zombies. Hashtag days before the evolution area descend, it seemed like he needed to deal with the zombie beforehand. He takes his car and reaches the Changzhong petrol station. According to Wang, the second batch of evolution team descend should be half a month after first batch, and the area did not seem to be within the evolution area. But since he already arrived there, he plans to kill the zombie. According to the smell of the blood the small petrol station had many people that died. He thinks what type of zombie could have been hiding there and if it is hunting or sleeping. He questions why there was an outward break on the door, was it because zombies were rushing A equals out to hunt humans or was there something inside that even the zombies feared? Wang reaches the backyard. In a shed there was aura of two creatures. Suddenly a zombie comes rushing out. Wang takes his sword out. He tries to hit it but is pushed back. The skin of the zombie was different from normal, it did not have exoskeleton but a elastic rubber, no wonder his sword bounced off. So it was a rare type which had not reached the mutated rank. But Wang was ready to kill it. He plans to kill it first and go after the next one. He dashes toward the zombie and slashes it. He slashes at the limbs of the zombie. The zombie tries to run away but Wang did not let it and kills the zombie. This one was killed, but the aura of another one was even scarier. Wang kicks the door open of the place where he sensed the zombie. He stands on the door and sees corpse lying around with a small girl at the end holding a teddy bear. A small little girl had she killed the zombies? Wang is in dilemma if he should interact with her. Wang goes toward the girl and greets her, he introduces himself as the convenience store's acting manager and asks if she understands him. The little girl does not speak anything. He further tries to talk with the girl saying that the clothes and the doll are stained in blood and offers to clean them. He says that it is dark and staying alone is dangerous and offers to take her someplace safe. Wang thinks if competitiveness, hygiene and sense of crisis can't make her speak. He then asks where her parents are to which she finally reacts. She speaks that her papa and mama are sleeping inside. Wang again introduces himself thinking she might not have heard the first time, but she tells him that she heard it. Wang asks why she did not reply, if she had heard him. The girl thought that Wang would leave her just like those who came before him. Wang tells the girl not to worry, he then tries to take her to safe place, but she refuses. The girl tells Wang to leave as the others said that she was a monster. Wang shouts that she is not a monster but an evolutioner. Evolutioner? The girl is confused. Wang consults the girl to not listen to the cowards and ignore their words and tells her that he is same as her. 
He tells her that he is also an evolutioner and asks for her name. The girl replies that her name is Tang Xiaoai. He asks Tang Xiaoai to come and live with him to which the girl agrees. The girl tells Wang that her papa and mama are inside. Wang asks the girl to stay where she is and goes inside to see zombies lying on the floor. The injuries to zombies did not seem to be caused by zombies but rather human caused. Wang does not know what happened at the petrol station, but her parents got such injuries because they protected their daughters. Wang sees something in the father's pocket. It was his ID, he was the president of Tangshu organization Tang Inquan. After the zombie outbreak crisis, the Tangshu Medicine Creation Organization obtained evolutionary collaborative organizations huge finance and became one of the top company. Wang had never thought that the founder Professor Tang Inquan, a well-known biologist would die in a small petrol station in the Dongcheng city. Such a pitiful kid originally was the princess of a huge organization but she had to face the pain and sadness for losing both parents. Wang goes toward Tang Xiaoyai and tell her that her parents may never wake up again. The girl blames herself for that as she was different from others. Wang disagrees, he tells her that she may be different but her parents did not die because of her but killed by others and as an evolutioner they needed to grow stronger enough to protect their loved ones. The girl sobs and hugs Wang Zhe. Wang tells her not to cry and bury her parents together. Wang buries the girl's parents. He suddenly gets the memories from his past life and drops on the ground. He too had once personally buried his brothers who were scarified. He is overwhelmed by his past, he suddenly comes to senses after Tang calls him out. Wang apologizes to Tang for recalling his past memory but he was fine now. The sun rises, in this world everything can be changed. Wang takes the little girl with her, thinking to prevent the same tragedy he must become stronger. She comes back to Wang's convenience store. After crying last night the girl finally had let her guard down and started trusting Wang but Dong Chang area will have evolution this month, and in his past life Dong Chang area evolution area is not raided by human but zombies got the crystals at the end. What's stranger is even though Dong Chang area has many survivors not even one provide guardians information, so the evolution was not simple. Al the moment of he got separated from Xiao AI, Wang is afraid that she would fall into autism again but bringing minor to the evolution area was somewhat dangerous so Wang plans to let Xiao AI choose. Xiao AI tells Wang that she wants to go. Wang asks if she is sure as the evolution area might be dangerous. Xiao says that she is sure as she did not want it to be alone again. Wang tells Xiao Ai that if it was other, he would order them what to do but the only request to Xiao from Wang was to care about herself first no matter what happens in the evolution area and during crisis even ignore other people who are calling for help. Xiao Ai asks what if the person asking for help is Wang. Wang tells that the same goes for him, he will not ask her to save him and will not ask to save him he repeats that his only request is for her to survive and live on. Xiao Ai agrees. Wang tells Xiao Ai to get ready as they are heading to the city tonight. The evolution area was going to descend very soon. Dongcheng City, the city was so quiet that it made Xiao Ai uneasy. Wang thinks that the girls was quite sharp and if she could get the evolution crystal, she might have a bright future. Wang tells Xiao that it owes quiet because there is a hospital in front and bigger the hospital the higher the chance of there being a high rank zombie so other zombies avoid it and so should them. Xiao Ai asks then where they were going. Wang says that she would find out once they get there. They reach a clothing store. Wang explains that even though his store does not lack resources it does not have girl clothes and since it is getting cold she needed new clothes. She walks around the store. Wang tells Xiao not to hesitate and pick anything she likes. Half an hour later. Both are well dressed. Wang asks where the military dagger he had was. Xiao shows that it's in her pocket. She remembers Wang words to always carry a weapon. Suddenly there is an explosion. It was very quick. The evolution area had descended. At the Shangdu City Military Control Area Information Room, they got a satellite detection that showed a large-scale energy reaction near the Dingchang City which was 97% similar to the previous evolution area at Shangdu City. Evolution area had occurred. The Intelligent Civilization Protection Plan opens the environmental conversion tear, 
55% generating evolution crystal guardians, evolution area clear condition, absorb evolution crystal. Shai I asks if it ended, Wang answers that it should have. Shai I asks why is it evening so soon since it was just morning a while ago. Wang explains that it is the evolution area effect but it was not a good thing since it will turn night soon. The zombies started appearing. Those zombies will evolve into mutated rank and now it's either mutated rank and wanderer ones. A zombie jumps toward Wang, he cuts it down. Xiao is amazed. Xiao plans on not being a burden and walks with her knife. She uses the knife to defeat numerous zombies. They stand back to back. A zombie comes from the back, it looks dangerous, it strikes with its spikes like a bullet, but Wang Zhe manages to block it. The zombie hurls towards Wang, he uses his power and blinds the zombie, and then strikes it. The zombie runs with pain and escapes. Wang senses that the guardian had seen him. Wang carries Xiao Ai and tells her that they need to leave that place first. Xiao was confused as the zombies had left already. Wang with his full power starts running from the area explaining that the zombies might have left but scarier and more troublesome thing was about to come. Xiao asks Wang what happened and why the zombie was different from the rest. Wang explains that he saw black shadow in some of those zombies' eyes and if he is right that shadow seems to be the clones of the guardian and it controls their movements. Xiao deduces that those zombies were just scouts. In a way that was correct as they were just puppets controlled by the area's guardian and just now Wang had used his abilities and was discovered by the guardians which meant the guardian had eyes on him. Xiao was worried that they were going to be chased by the zombies but Wang explains that the situation is not worse since the guardian's most important mission isn't toll kill but to protect the evolution crystal and from his analysis the guardian cannot control all zombies and the main body of it doesn't have strong combat ability. Xiao Yai asks what they should do now. Wang tells that from the looks of it the Guardian did not follow them so they should go toward the safe house first. Xiao sees something and tells Wang to look. When they came to the city it did not have a lake, Xiao was confused on what was going on. Suddenly the zombies were nearing them. The zombies had found them. The Guardian had discovered them. Wang grabs Xiao and runs before they get surrounded. At the top of the building, it's a person sniping. Boom the zombie's head is blasted, the surrounding zombies were mostly killed by the sniper. Buzz, the walkie-talkie rings, but since no one was responding the sniper guessed the team had been wiped. Suddenly the sniper sees a kid through the scope. Wang suddenly feels the sense of guardian watching him and falls down. Xiao gets worries and tries to wake Wang up. Xiao looks in front and sees an ominous zombie, maybe it is the guardian. Xiao is confused on what she should do as Wang Jia had fainted and they were surrounded. Xiao gets ready with her knife but with her current ability there was no way that she could defeat the zombie but still she risks her life and tries. She kills all the other zombie and goes toward the main one, she planned on killing it while it lowered its guard but due to its ominous aura she was startled. The zombie pushes Xiao and she crashes into a window, she never thought that she would lose her. Wang Jia, his body felt very heavy to him, was he being controlled by the Guardian's mind? Wang wonders how Tang Xiao Ai is. Wang thinks that Blood Crystal's ability can't be used on mind just like Pyramid's monster, it's also a Guardian, so he thought he can use ability to counter ability. He uses the Spirit Soul Shock, so he must be able to wake up. Xiao calls Wang Jia, he wakes up just in time he uses his power and cuts the head of the zombie with his sword. He asks Xiao Ai if she is okay and helps her get up. Xiao apologies for her carelessness but Wang says that she did not need to apologize but rather Wang should thank her for not abandoning him. Wang gets attacked from the back Xiao warns him. A bullet comes flying in and kills both the zombies Wang deduces that it was an evolutioner that shot just now. The sniper arrives at and asks Wang and Xiao to come along and follow. Wang thinks that in an apocalypse world a stranger helping out is very rare. The sniper stops and tells them that they had arrived. It was a kindergarten, the degree of danger of kindergarten is the highest and hard to deal, so Wang is skeptical about entering. The sniper tells them to come in. Wang and Xiao enter, there were no sign of blood and corpses so they should be safe in there. They walk downstairs. The sniper wants a door there were a bunch of kids in there. The kids ask who the people with her were. The sniper tells the kid not to be scared and go in first. 
The kid agrees. The sniper takes of the mask apologizing for the late introduction. She was a pretty girl, a kindergarten's teacher Chen Wei. Wang remembers her to be the famous weapon evolutioner, top 10 greatest sniper. Wang introduces himself and Xiao and apologizes for being wary of her before. She tells them that it is fine since they were only cautious. She invites both of them in to talk. She introduces the place as the Red Star Kindergarten's warehouse thanks to which they were able to hang on for the starting period. Wang sees a kid, Chen Wei had picked him outside, this time she had went out to find milk powder for him. The baby drinks the milk. Chen Wei then comes toward Xiao and asks where she was injured so she can help disinfect the wound. She then bandages Xiao's arm and tells her to rest well. Chen Wei then starts talking to Wang asking if they are evolutioner too. Wang says yes, Wei was happy that two more evolutioner can make up for the combat ability that she lost earlier. Wang asked if Wei knew other evolutioner from Dongchang City. Wei tells that including her the city has five known evolutioner but after the zombie outbreak four of them can't be contacted. Wang then explains that this time's outbreak is caused by the Guardian and when they get the evolution crystal they can change the situation. Wei says that she knows where the crystal is. It is on the Guardian's body. Wang thinks if that is the case, he needs to fight with the Guardian head-on and it will be very dangerous. Wei calls Wang Zhu in shock she sees that Xiao might have been infected. Wang examines her and finds out that the wound is not directly caused by zombie, but she actually got infected after she was injured which meant that she won't become a zombie. But she had a fever now and needed antipyretics and antibiotic vitamins. Wei says that she did not have any and the nearest hospital from there was Dongcheng City's public hospital but there are scary zombies there and they should not go there but Wang carries Xiao and tells Wei that there won't be any zombies after he will have killed them all. This makes Wei shock and exited at the same time and offers to help. They reach near the hospital. There were zombies at the hospital's entrance. Wei says that previously a few survivors brought weapons and went in but never came out again. It seemed like there were even more zombies compared to before so Wei asks Wang to leave and come back with a plan but Wang refuses to leave without medicines as without them Xiao AI will be in danger. Wang goes in alone, Wei tries to stop him but he enters the hospital. He takes his sword out and cuts all the zombies at the end race. Wei was shocked at the abnormal skills of Wang. Wang asks Chen Wei where the pharmacy is. She tells that it is at the second floor and follows behind Wang. Wang examines the area, he sees weapons that might have been dropped from 10th floor or above. Wang could roughly judge Tet the strong zombie Wei mentioned. Wang was confused why the survivors went to the 10th floor when the pharmacy was on the second floor. Wei sees the pharmacy right in front, there were not any zombies in there. Wei puts Xiao at the corner and asks her to hang in there. Wei sees light above the ceiling and takes out her sniping rifle, the light opened up to become an eye. So, Wei shoots it. Wang asks what it was, Wei says that they have been exposed to a strong zombie. A zombie with a huge slimy body and numerous eyes appears. Wei fires at the zombie, the zombie was targeting Xiao. Wang cuts the tentacle that was going to reach Xiao AI. He tells Wei to leave the zombie to him. He uses his ability to cut down the monster. It was a rare, mutated type and if Wang is careless, they all will be in danger. Wang tries to lure the zombie towards him. Taking the chance Wei goes to find the medicines. The zombie was following Wang. To kill the zombie, its brain needed to be destroyed but Wang had no idea where the brain of this zombie was. He jumps from the stairs and attacks near its head, but the head did not have the brain. Wang Jia figured that the head must be in the outer body like its eyes and prepares to attack it. Wei finds the medicines for Xiao. Now only last medicine was left. Suddenly a huge wave comes. Xiao gets very alert and is looking what caused it. Xiao AI wakes up and start waking. Wei though that she had awakened but something was strange. Xiao AI's consciousness was not awake. There was a black shadow in front of Xiao AI, was it the Guardian? Xiao keeps walking toward the black shadow. Wei shoots the shadow and shouts at Xiao to wake up. The bullet she was shooting had no effect as the black shadow did not have any physical body, bullets could not hit him. 
She tosses the gun aside and grabs Xiao Ai to make her body stay behind, but Wei was struggling to do so as Xiao Ai's body was suddenly so strong. The shadow glared toward Wei and its eyes glowed red, this made Wei hear music and feel sleepy. Wei suddenly came into her senses and Xiao Ai also stopped moving. Luckily the black shadow had disappeared. Was it because the zombies affected the guardian clone's power and shake off the control? Wei thought. Those zombies were attracted by gunshot sound. So Wei shot outside to signal Wan to quickly come back. Meanwhile at the rooftop Wang heard the gunshot and guessed that Xiao Ai had encountered danger. Wang had already used one third of the red crystal in his body and if the fight continued, he would be in a disadvantage. He did not have much time, so he plans to end it. He looks at the zombie's tentacle to find out which tentacle its brain is at. He then starts cutting all of its tentacles. One after another. He reaches the last tentacle and then slices it off. Such a coincidence it was, the tentacle was hidden in its last tentacle. He again hears a shot, he feels like Chen Wei was rushing him and start leaving the terrace. But there was a tentacle that was following him. It was the floating head of the zombie. Finally, the monster had exposed himself. Wang had known about it already. He looked back not to look at the corpse but to let the zombie know that during then the zombie had lost already. Wan uses spirit soul shock and cuts the head of the zombie in two. Wang admits that the zombie was smart but parasite inside a huge body had confused his judgment. But it liked that body too much and during Wang's final attack it abandoned it and exposed its weakness and thanks to the zombie Wang's inner red crystal broke through. His muscle, bone, burst power, control power and wisdom had enhances. Then he goes towards Chen Wei. Chen Wei only had 16 bullets and that do were being used. There was a total of 33 zombies she aims and shots at the right moment. Her shot pierced through all the zombies that were aligned. But the batch of zombies kept on coming. She was down to her last bullets BU the zombies kept on coming. Wang jumps from the top and reaches to Chen Wei. Wei was happy that Wang had finally arrived. Wei was aiming at the top. Wang tells Wei if she had looking for the zombie from earlier, Wang had already defeated it. Wei was surprised that Wang could kill even the scary mutated zombie. She though that Wang was very strong. Wang tells Wei to save her bullets and leave the rest to him. After the red crystal got upgraded, it lets Wang have peak rank evolutioner's combat ability and even awakened new skill. In a flask he killed numerous zombies. He used a technique called Burst which released the Blood Crystal ability instantly like an atomic bomb until it collapses, his body would then enter the period of weakness and can accumulate until the Blood Crystal is full again. But to deal with the normal zombies he did not need to use this ability. Chen Wei asks if the hospital's zombies are all killed since the outside was so quiet. Wang says yes and asks Chen Wei if she has found all the medicines. Wei tells Wang that she had found all but when she was looking of the medicine Xiao Ai was affected by the guardian's shadow and was almost about to take her away. Wang thanks Wei for protect Xiao Ai. Chen blushes and says that it was nothing and she did what she needed to do as Xiao Ai was only a child. They reach at the kindergarten. Wei was happy that they had came back peacefully. Wang agrees to that while giving Xiao Ai the medicine to drink. Xiao Ai then rests, her fever was going down quickly thanks to the medicines. Wei yawned, Wang tells her that she can rest, and he will guard the place while she sleeps. Wei agrees and thanks Wang since it had been long time since Wei had a good nap. Wei was very tired and falls asleep as soon as she closed her eyes. It is the next morning. Wei wakes up to a loud noise. She asks Wang what the sound was that woke her up. Wang says that it was the zombies and tells Wei not to make any sound since the zombies had now entered the kindergarten. Wei looks through the sunroof, even though it was morning there were many zombies that were moving around. Maybe the guardian had used its ability. Wang explains that the zombies target are not them and they will leave the area if they don't make any sound. Chen Wei takes a breath of relied, she looks toward the children to see that one of them had awakened. The child starts crying. It was the child she had brought back. The cry of the baby had attracted the zombies. The zombies rushed toward the sound in full speed down the basement of the kindergarten. 
Chen Wei asks Wang what they should do. It was a troublesome situation, and if the Guardian were to see Wang there were chances that more zombies will come at the location. Xiao wakes up and offers to help kill those zombies. She explains if it is dangerous for Wang Zhe to kill them then she should do it. Chen Wei was worried about Xiao AI health, but she insisted that she was fine now and had no other choices left. Wang stopped Xiao AI telling her to sit back and let him handle it since Xiao had not fully healed. Wang tells them that he just had to be careful not be seen by the zombies. Wang then starts cutting down the zombies making sure he is not seen by them. Chen Wei and Xiao are having conversation at the meantime. Wei asks what she is good at. Xiao AI thinks and tells her, at handling corpses. Wei disagrees and tells Xiao that she is good at sniping and at hospital she used less bullets and killed many zombies. Xiao had fainted before that, so she never saw Wei in action. Wei angrily then asks Wang to tell Xiao that she had done what she said. But Wang was thinking about his past life about the current evolution zone. This evolution area was broken by zombies after a few months but the situation now were indeed stranger and the zombies were crazier than before. After Wang's red crystal had upgraded, with Tang Zao AI and his combat ability they weren't scanned of zombies but Dong Chang City's other survivors. Could they hold it? Wei asks Wan what he was thinking about. He tells Wei then from the current progress, the survivors in the evolution area might all die in one week. So, they had to do something about it. Wan uses her walkie-talkie, changing the signal she tries to communicate with whoever the signal could catch, she had been buzzing for half an hour but there was no response from the other side. Wang evaluates the situation and from the looks of it the zombies were in berserk, the longer they drag, the lower the chance of victory they will have so they must fight with the Guardian quickly and end this. But Wei had faced the Guardian she was worried as the Guardian was too strong. Wang tells Wei not to worry, as the evolution area is human history, it is formed by myths and stories and if they know the original form of the story, they could win. Wei understood. So Wang tells that they should go back to the basement and organize the information they know with Xiao AI. The outside is totally silence. At the basement, Wang had figured that for continuously two days during sunset, the Guardian's ability had disappeared and also the berserk of zombies had stopped which meant when it's night the Guardian's ability to control zombies is weakened. And the Guardian at night has the ability to force people to sleep. According to Wang's senses, the target should be human. Wei asks, if that is the case why was Xiao AI fine? Wang was not sure why as he was very different from Xiao AI. Gender, height, weight all of those could also be the reason. Xiao AI thinks that age was the factor because she had once seen that Guardian's shadow or its back has many kids. Wei was shocked, so did the Guardian kidnap kids? Wang analyses the situation, the Guardian's power is provided by the evolution crystal, it is not necessary for it to kidnap kids. The only reason it did so might be because of the rules. Just like Sphinx must protect Pyramid, Guardian must follow rules and rules for this Guardian is to kidnap kids but deducing the Guardian would be difficult as there are too many monsters that eats kids. Wang asks if Wei and Xiao have any idea. Wei explains that the shadow blurry so it must be male and the music she was hearing must have been. Xiao answers pipe. A man with a pipe and kidnap kids, wait it could be Pied Piper. The guardian they were facing was Pied Piper. Wei had never heard of Pied Piper, Xiao was surprised that she was a kindergarten teacher and never heard of Pied Piper. Pied Piper comes from a kid poem in England, legend has it that in a town called Hamelin, rats are infested, during then a piper in a floral dress came there, he said that he can help kill the rats, but he'll need reward, so the citizens all agreed. Thus, he played his pipe to lure the rats into the Weezer River, where all the rats drowned. After the rats are killed, the citizens reneged on his promise and refused to pay him the reward, the piper stormed out of the town, vowing to return later to take revenge. One day, while adults were away, the piper returned, dressed in a green like a hunter and playing his pipe. In doing so, he attracted all the town's children. All children followed him out of the town into a cave, after which they were never seen again. Lastly, only lean kids escaped the disaster. After the evolution area had descended, suddenly the Dong Chang city had got a river, zombies are like rats, after night falls, adults fall into sleep and kids are brought away by the piper. So it all made sense. 
The good news was that the Piper chose to bring the kids away as a punishment which meant that he was weak in combat ability. This meant that the Evolution Area's Guardian's combat ability should not be too strong. But the problem now was in the day there would be hundreds of zombies helping the Guardian and in the dark night he had other abilities so, how could they find the Guardian that turns into Shadow? Xiao takes the responsibility of finding the Guardian as the Guardian will definitely come to bring her with him and they only needed to follow her to reach to the Guardian. Chen Wei disagrees as it was too dangerous and turns to Wang Zhe. Wang Zhe too disagreed with that plan as after experiencing failure Guardian will make a trap. Xiao sighs and asks then, what they shall do. Wang thinks if follow Xiao AI will enter the trap set by the Guardian and if they can't follow time won't wait for them. He tells Wei to not be depressed since the Guardian is planning to set them up tonight, they plan to go with it and make a hunt area for him. Then counter. At another part of the evolution zone, there is a team lead by An Shang Evolutioner, a former athlete, leader of the largest survivor team in the Dongcheng city calling his men to come out as the zombies have left. He asks his men to quickly search for food or weapons. One of the men said that Chen Wei was coming to meet them. After their garrison was attacked by zombies in the day, they had very few supplies left and he thinks that Wei's condition might be worse. Chen Wei and Wang Zhe reached their hideout. Seeing two people and Shang was surprised to see Chen Ai had found a companion. Wang introduces himself and asks for Shang's cooperation to help him eliminate the Guardian and obtain the crystal. Shang thinks that Wang might be joking with him and asks Chen if they really think that they can kill the Guardian in a single shot. Wang says that they cannot, but they have collected information about the Guardian and if they work together then they can succeed. Shang asks proof as the information might be fake. His other companions are also mad about that because for their two people there were too many of them so they thought they would be cannon fodder for them. Wei was startled by the situation, but Wang uses his power. Seeing him blow red the other people were surprised. Unshang thought that Wang's spiritual power was really great. Wang tells them not to worry as they were only needed to take care of the normal zombies and Wan was to kill the Guardian. The others were skeptical if Wang could kill the zombies. Shang even told Wang to stop joking but Wang tells him that they can try and fight him if they don't believe. Shang takes the axe ready to fight. Wang tells him that they are mistaken and he meant to fight all of the guys. The others got furious hearing this. Wang tells them that since those guys were able to survive until now, they ought to be capable, one by one was too tiring and time wasting so he wanted everyone to come at him at once. The others cursing Wang take their weapons and attack Wang. Shang attacks first. Wang is not dodging. Wei is confused why Shang did not dodge, the axe was very close to hitting him but Wang using the his ability stops the axe with his bare hand and holds it. Shang could not move the axe and is confused what Wang has done. He then effortlessly flips Shang. And then hits him with his undrawn sword and hits Shang in the face and knocks him down. The others are startled by this. Wang suddenly disappears from their sight. They had no idea what was going on. Wang had reached behind them. Before they could fully notice Wang manages to hit them and knock them unconscious. Unshang slowly wakes up. He then tells Wang that he far exceeded his imagination and he was very strong. He tells that he might had some problems in his eyes. Wang tells Shang that he did not use his weapon and Shang's team had only fainted so there was no need to worry. Shang tells that he knows and thanks Wang from going easy on them. Wang asks if he has changed his mindset, Shang says that it has. Then Wang helps Shang get up. Shang asks for the plan and their role in the plan. Wan tells him that after experiencing last night's failure, the Guardian will set trap for them, so what Shang's team needed to do was stall those zombies, around 100 of them and not let the zombies help the Guardian and also protect the girl who will be the bait. Shang is shocked hearing about the 100 zombies and starts counting the number of men in his team. He was worried about his underlining safety, which made Wang think that Shang was a good leader. Wang tells him that it might be hard for his guys to deal with the zombies, but they only needed to stall the zombies kind of like run while fighting. But still so many zombies it was impossible not to have any injuries or deaths. Wang then explains that if they don't kill the Guardian soon, the zombies will go berserk during the morning and during then the chance of survival decreases each day. 
Chen Wei then tell and Shang that neither Liu Bai nor Li Jia Kuan's team could be contacted, and those teams might have been wiped out and they might be the only survivors in the evolution area. Other than risking their lives there was no other choice left. An Shang was shocked to hear that they were wiped out. So he understands that if nothing was done they would die sooner or later so they agreed to take the risk. He asks what others feel. The others were in favor of fighting and were pumped up. Wang and Shang shake hands saying that they are companions for life and death. Shang then greets Wang as the leader. Wang was confused and startled. They then go to take Xiao Ai. Wei explains that the boss they were referring to was Wang Jia and he had introduced Xiao Ai as her little sister, so that the others will not look down on her. Xiao understood the situation after Wei explains it to her. She was to be used as bait to get the guardian. Wang would be going after the guardian while the others protected her. Wei asks if she will be alright if Wang is OT beside her. She tells her that even though they are not together she trusts in Wang Jia and also Wang Jia trusts in her and that was enough for her. They then get going, they go toward their destination in the car. They reach at the site and an aura is felt by everyone. Shang recognizes the aura as the guardian's aura. He hands over a stick to Xiao and asks her to be careful. Xiao also leaves hoping they would successfully stall the zombies. Xiao Ai reaches a building, she goes inside the room and ties the stick to her leg. She senses the guardian coming. Wang was also ready for the guardian. The guardian was on the way with zombies following him. The zombie had reached. Xiao was alone in the classroom. The winds knock the pencil over, she get a nostalgia about her school days. Attending school, well for her it seemed to be a long time ago. The clock struck 12. Xiao Ai suddenly starts being controlled by the guardian's music. She starts walking toward the door, but the crutch made it difficult. She stops and remembers Wang saying that in the story of Pied Piper only the kids with crutches escaped, so Wang suggests wearing the crutch as it might be of great help. Xiao gets back her consciousness and sees the black shadow. But she could not control her body at all and the distance between her and the black shadow kept getting shorter by the moment. Outside the school, there is another shadow it stops. The guardian had stopped. Shang shouts that it was an ambush and it was starting to control the zombies. Chen Wei is quick to take out her gun and shoot. There were different types of zombies. It was being hard for Wang's crew to handle them. They were all scared and running to retreat. But Shang was fighting the zombies and motivating the other to stop running too. He had promised Wan to do it, if they did not fight they would be dying sooner or later. The other understood the assignment. They started supporting Shang as either way they were going to die so they at least wanted to die trying. They started shooting and killing the zombies but there were too many. So, they plan to retreat while stalling the zombies but Shang tells them that they cannot retreat as Wang's little sister was still not saved. A zombie tries to attack Xiao, but she could move her body she knocks the zombie out with one punch while the others were saying her to stay away from the zombie. Knocking out the zombie shocked the others and were in shock that the girl needed protection with that level of combat ability. Others were motivated by this and were eager to protect Wang's little sister. Chen Wei was watching it from the distance, she thinks that it was very lucky that they were fine. She hopes that they hang on for a while at least until she can help them. She shoots the zombies trying to enter the school premises thinking that the zombies are more than expected and she quickly manages to kill it. Wang is searching for the zombie. He hopes for the guardian to be near as Xiao Ai and the rest cannot hang on for long time, he must quickly find it and end it quickly. He reaches a place and starts hearing the guardian's song. Wang had started feeling dizzy, which meant that he had entered the guardian's skill range. To come to his senses he uses the red crystal so that he can resist against the skill of the guardian and he starts searching for it again. Wang finally find the guardian. Eight in front of him. The guardian was playing the pipe, he was using his melody in a large scale. The monster was affecting the Shang's people as well. Xiao predicted the fight might have started. Wei was surprised as the Guardian's ability was affecting them even when they were this far and worried about how Wang Zhe was doing. Wang Zhe was standing in front of the Guardian. 
It amplified its power to control Wang but could not as Wang also had an ability to deal with the Guardian. Wang uses Spirit Soul Shock and scares the Guardian. The Guardian was now on full alert. The pipe had evolution crystal that speed up the evolution of the zombies but that would cause the Guardian to be backlashed by the ability, in the end eventually making the situation in the evolution zone unbalanced. When the Guardian saw Wang, it had hoped that it could control Wan so he could be the best tool to help the Guardian maintain balance in the evolution zone. It was such a pity for the Guardian as the mental spirit attack was no longer effective against him. Wang draws his sword as he is wary of the situation and knows that Guardian also had some other abilities up its sleeve and prompts the Guardian to use those ability. The Guardian uses another move, his whole body turns black with show strings coming out of his body. It was water kind of slimy, Wang dodges but sees something disturbing. Those were kids' corpses. One of the hand reaches out and grabs Wang. He quickly notices it and cuts the hand off. Last time, Wei finds the medicines for Xiao. Qin Wei only had 16 bullets and that do were being used. Wang defeats the monster and rushes down to help Qin. After defeating all the zombies Wang had gotten some new abilities. They get the medicine and head back. Wei was now feeling a lot better. Next morning there is a zombie attack, Wang manages to kill them and they find out that the Guardian is Pied Piper and devise a plan to take it down. They take the help of Wei's acquaintance in the city to raid the crystal. He team acknowledges Wang's anility and promised to help him. They use Xiao as a bait. The Guardian with the zombies arrive. The team protects Xiao and Wang searches for the Guardian. He finds it and they began to exchange blows. The Guardian used it black water ability to summon the zombies of the kids he had abducted. One of the hand reaches out and grabs Wang. He quickly notices it and cuts the hand. Continue. Wang walks through the attack of the Guardian. There are eyes glowing from the water. Those glowing eyes were the eyes of kids that were kidnapped by the Guardian. They had turned into zombie being controlled by the Guardian. But those zombies were not capable of stopping Wang. He cut his way through the zombies. He started slicing the zombies in his sight. The Guardian roared in fury. A big landscape of water formed around the Guardian. The whole area began to flood. Chen Wei heard the noise not knowing what was going on. The zombies that the team was fighting could not move anymore. They thought that Wang must have suppressed the Guardian and started cheering Wang Zhe. They were more motivated. But Xiaoa tells that it was different, she could feel that the Guardian gave up here to gather all its power to deal with Wang Zhe. So, they needed to go and help Wang Zhe quickly. The leaser commands the team to quickly finish up here and then move ahead to help Wang Zhe. Wang Zhe had come to the rooftop to save himself from the flood released by the Guardian. He figured that he should definitely not be touched by the Black River. But Wang sees something underneath the Black River. A giant creator rises from the river. The creature had gathered all the zombies and fused into one body. This might speed up the evolution of the Guardian being backlashed by the crystal and get devoured. The Guardian was really betting on this. But if the Guardian died the monster in front of him will obtain the evolution crystal and the disaster of the evolution area will far exceed his past life. It was extremely hard to completely eradicate this monster and the only way to kill the peer and take away the source of all the energy, the evolution crystal. The zombie monster attacks Wang, but he manages to dodge it and lands on the roof. He then uses his red crystal ability to increase his strength and tries to use his large weapon to deal with the monster. He then takes a steel pillar and throws it toward the monster. He does this process several times. This again cause the attached zombies to fall out, they also start attacking Wang, but it was nice for Wang. He keeps throwing the steel pillars until the monster is defeated. This left the Guardian in shock. Wang goes after the Guardian but the Guardian again uses his flute to attack Wang. But Wang manages to deflect the attack, the Guardian had used yet another ability that let Wang thinking. The Guardian again had healed the monster sand was controlling it. Wang's time was running out so he must defeat it quickly. The Guardian started uses his flute again, should Wang use his new ability burst and risk it? 
Suddenly, a bullet passes from his side. It was Chen Wei, she has just made it in time. Wang tells that the guardian like him who kills human, abducts kids, an evil guardian like him should be punished today. The Pied Piper was confused. Suddenly a bullet hits him and his pipe falls down. Wang then seizing the opportunity hurls towards the guardian. The guardian commands the zombie to shield him, but it was no useless. So now does the guardian Pied Piper die? Red lightning strikes the sky. Normal people are confused and scared what is going on. The team are also confused about the light. Chen Wei sees that it is Wang Zhe. A dragon-like aura forms in front. It is Wang Zhe's attack. The guardian is scared and use his flute as a defense. But he is cut in half with his flute rather less. The guardian shouts in pain. Shine and Xiao are running towards the light questioning if Wang had one. Xiao sees something. Wang is glowing in red aura and looks unconscious. Was he being devoured by the light? The light then hits Chen Wei, Xiao, Shang and everyone. The humans had won. People were relived to be alive. Wang thinks that the evolution crystal this time is carried by the Guardian so he will select the licky ones that deal damage or been threat to the Guardian. The energy of the crystal was as strong as the first evolution area but the skills. Wang grabs the crystal and tries to see the skills of the Piper, the Guardian. The skills were Berserk, the skill to make zombies go Berserk. Second was Drowsy Nocturne that makes human in a certain range fall asleep and is only effective at night. Wang thinks that if he gets the second skill it will be only helpful to make Xiao sleep easier. The third skill was Mind Control that uses sound within a certain range to control target's mind with no number restriction. This skill with Berserk could maximize its power but Wang could only take one skill. The fourth skill was Life Force Gather that create a mutated body however you want by gathering the zombie. This was the sill that Pooper used to create a big monster but its success rate was way too weak. The fifth skill was the Black Tide emitted that had property of spiritual erosion, the more life force swallowed the larger tide the stronger ability. This skill did not need any combination and if one develop it, the effect might turn out amazing. The sixth skill was Shadow Substance that could be used to materialize Oum's shadow and the shape of the shadow had no restriction and if Wang has this ability, he will always have something to block a vital attack and can also increase attack distance. Wang uses the lottery draw power and gains an ability. The ability was Dark Shadow Substance. Even though it was not as good as Kuroshio and Mind Control it was good enough skill. Wang sees the sun shining. The Dongchang City's evolution area was finally opening up. Meanwhile at Shangdu City. The zombies are lying dead. A soldier asks his captain if he saw that earlier. The captain answer yes, a mutated rank monster 3 meters high was now observing them from afar. The soldiers were shocked, a mutated rank. With just little manpower, could they face it? They ask their caption that call for reinforcement. The other soldier replies that to stop the zombies they had bombed the bridge and now they were on a deserted island and there will be no reinforcement. The captain is afraid that only deity could save them now. Crap! The zombie had appeared. It was clinging on to the building. The outpost was about to collapse. The captain orders everyone to jump out. They all managed to get out before it collapsed. But the monster was chasing them, so they needed to run fast. The captain got stuck below. He was under the rubbles, he orders his men not to stop and go. The monster was just in front of the captain. The others started firing the zombie to save the captain, but the bullets had no effect. This was very bad. It was going to be over for the captain. But the body of the zombie was sliced in an instant. A girl had come to save the captain. She was an evolutioner, she uses her power to suppress the zombie. Now the situation had been handled. She introduces herself as the Shangdu Army Area Special Operation Command Department Xia Ran under order she had came to help them. The captain stands up with the help of soldier and thanks her for helping them. The captain is skeptical if the monster is really dead. Xiaoran tells them not to worry as even though it was only 10 m in the ground, when it fell its right exceeded by 10 times and its brain was probably smashed. 
The soldiers were shocked hearing 10 times. Through these few fights with the zombies and the control device that allows her to fight at far away she had gradually mastered her gravity control ability. She thinks that now she is closer to Wong's standard. Her intercom starts making sound. She gets the information that the Dongchang City's evolution area was raided. Shangdu City Special Operation Headquarters. It had only been three days since Dongchang City's evolution area descended, so how was it possible that it was raided so fast? It was great that in such a short amount of time it was raided so, the damage in there should not be serious. But still it was hard to believe. Was it a false report? According to the on-site situation transmitted by the satellite, the information was absolutely true. Ask for why it's raided in short time. Siat interferes Command Song and she tells him that if it was him. Commander Song agrees, it was him, it would make sense. A person asks who he is and if Commander knows him. Commander tries to dodge the question saying that it must be luck and the Guardian must have been weak and luckily killed. Xiao says that it was not luck or coincidence, he has the pinnacle of the evolutioners and his combat ability far surpass any of theirs. His name is Wang Zhe. Commanded was furious hearing that his ability surpassed all of theirs and thinks it is too arrogant. The others think that if he defeated the Guardian, he must have been strong and concluding that Commander Song though of him it might be true. Song looks at his watch and looking at the time it must be time for Zui Yu and the others to arrive at the Dongchang city and get the answer. Outside Dongchang city. Zui is thinking about how the area was quickly raided suddenly she get the call from the headquarter. She informed that now the Dongchang city is releasing large amount of light, it seems to have been raided. It was Xia Ran on the call. She gets the information that Wang Zhe might have raided the evolution area. Zhuo was shocked to hear that. Xia says that it is just a guess a of hers and the commander but if it is him then her mission is to recruit him. Zhuo smiles and tells that she understands. Zhuo commands the army to get ready and march forward to Dongchang city. They get their vehicles ready and drive toward the city. Zhuo is longing to see Wang Zhe. At Dongchang City. The monster created by the Pied Piper is still running free. Even thought the evolution area is dispersed, the large zombie created by the Piper's skill won't disappear. IT will become a new nightmare for the city of Dongchang if not stooped quickly. It does not have the evolution crystal so the recovery had greatly weakened. It was just the perfect opportunity to test his new ability. The zombie gets afraid of Wang and starts running. Ha! Huh? Wang starts running after the zombie telling the zombie to stop and get back so that he can nourish his red crystal. But the zombie tear began to drop while running. Shang was tired of all the chaos. But the power that the light conveyed seemed to be very powerful. He looks around and sees that Xiao is not there. He asks his men if they have seen Xiao, but they had not seen her either. The mist was gone after the light came shining and when they opened their eyes. Shang was scared as if anything happens to Xiao, they might all die. His intercom starts buzzing, it echoed danger. What was Chen Wei taking about? What danger? The evolution area was already gone, so what danger was left? Suddenly a giant foot is above Shang's head. The others warn him and tell him to look behind. He looks behind but the foot crushes him. His men are terrified of the situation. But he was alright, he had managed to dodge it. The monster again tries to attack Shang. Again, the monster was only targeting Shang. Shang was running for his life. Through the sniper scope Wei was also watching, she was also confused as to why the monster was only chasing him. She tries not to care about that, and he will be fine, so she tries to find Wang Zhe first and ask him what is going on. She suddenly had wings on her back. This was her new ability. And on the ground it was Wang Zhe. Wang Zhe was confused where the zombie was running off to. Chen Wei comes flying calling Wang Zhe. Wang realized that she can not only fly in the sky but her vision had also increased. To a sniper her ability fit her a lot. Chen Wei was happy that Wang was alright. She asks Wang what was going on with that huge zombies and why was it attacking Sun Shang now? Wang explains that the Guardian gathered zombies and made it and it was a bit troublesome to handle. 
He asks how is everyone on the Shang side and if anyone is injured. Chen Wei tells that there is no injury but Shang is playing whack-a-mole with the zombie. What? Wang was confused. On Shang's side he was dodging the zombie. His team were telling him to hang on in there and dive in the earth. Chen Wei and Wang Zhe were watching from behind. Wang realizes that the zombie seemed to be taunted and if Wang is right, Shang's dive into the earth ability taunts the nearby zombie. Shang cries for help and asks Wang to not just sit around and watch. Wang folds his hands and tells him to hang in there while he thinks of a way to kill it. He agrees and dives into the earth. It is not hard to defeat it, he just needed to kill the zombie in the center of its body and it will naturally decompose into countless individuals. Chen Wei tells that its body is so strong that even a bullet cannot damage so she asks what to do. Wang blowing in his red aura tells that it is very simple, he simply needs to cut it. Wang uses his shadow technique. Wei finds out that it was the piper's shadow ability. Wang tells it is similar but he had a different way of using it. In a flash he reaches the zombie. Zombie as a defense grows spikes on his back. Wang had thought of the dark substance as only a defensive ability but had never thought this application of the dark substance. He then uses his power to slice the zombie in half. He had only used one move. Everyone were amazed. Chen Wei had thought that the gap between herself and Wang had gone smaller after getting her ability but she never thought that he had become even stronger. Dark Substance and the Red Crystal combined could increase his combat ability only when those master combination, then they can become a top-notch evolutioner. But this used too much energy and it seemed like he need more evolution crystal to increase his power. The evolutioner ranking was going to be out soon. Wang wondered what his ranking would be. Shine comes jumping praising Wang for his ability. Wang tells them that even though the huge zombie is defeated the smaller ones from his body will soon break free so they need to handle it quickly. So many zombies, Shang was shocked. Wang suggests to simply burn them all he had also brought gas. But the area had too many tress and they should do this in isolation. Shang orders his men to dig a hole. Wang tells don't Shang have a digging ability? Shang remembers his new ability. He then quickly gets to work. He starts digging around the zombie and was quickly done with the work. Shang then light the zombies in fire. He then asks where Tang Xiaoai is as he did not see her. Shang tells that after the evolution area was gone he was targeted by the zombies and Tang Xiao was not by his side. Chen tells that she has not seen Xiao too but with her combat ability she should be fine, so did she go to test her new ability? Xiao answers on the intercom that there is only to look for her and she is on the building's rooftop at the left side of them. They all look at the building. Wang looks at the building and asks Xiao what she is doing over there. Xiao is on the building and asks Wang to come over there. Wang agrees to go there. Wang thinks that even though Xiao Ai is a kid she is matured and would not request anything without a reason. Had she encountered something? Wang goes in the building and asks what she was doing there alone. Xiao turns around and tells Wang that she had something to ask regarding her ability. He tells her that he is confident enough to answer her question so Wang asks what her question is. Xiao tells that she cannot explain but she would show him the ability instead. She shows him the shadow. Wang thinking it was the Pied Piper carries Xiao and backs down. He is in ready position with his sword. Xiao tells Wang not to worry, and it is her ability but the Pied Piper. Wang is confused, her ability. She should have gotten one-fourth of the evolution crystal, how could she have the power to control Pied Piper born from the completer evolution crystal? She tells Wang that she is indeed not that strong, so the Pied Piper is not the complete version. It was a young kid. So it is a growth type ability so Xiao Ai's ability was indeed unimaginable. If Wang were to remember correctly, in his past life list there isn't her which meant that she dies early in Wang's past life. Wang tells Xiao that her ability is very strong and might threaten her safety too, so he suggests to keep her ability a secret. Xiao tells that it is correct as each guardian had killed many people and is hated by many so she hid there after she got the ability. Wang tells that not only that he is worried that someone can experiment with her ability and like guardian's ability like eternal life. Xiao is shocked hearing that. 
She understood the situation that tells Wang that she would try her best to not use her ability in front of others. Wang pats Xiao's head and tells her to hang in there until she is strong enough to protect herself or have gotten protection from organization. Xiao asks what organization? Wang replied like, military. Xiao tells Wang that she does not want to go to the military. Wang explains that military can not only provide her with protection but also support her and asks why she does not want to go to the military. Xiao asks if she would not get protection with Wang. And as Wang had explained the best way to protect herself was to become stronger, so even though there are many people in military Xiao asks if they are stronger than him. Xiao further asks if Wang did not want to live with her and was preparing to leave her. Wang sighs and tells her that he understood and if she is willing, he would continue traveling together with her. Xiao looks and Wang hold his hand and tells him that he is willing. He tells Xiao to let's go together to which Xiao agrees. Wang felt great to be able to have someone he trusts and regarding separation, to wait until she becomes stronger. They come out of the building. Shang marches toward them and asks if they are alright and apologizes for being targeted by zombie and not being able to take care of her and begs her not to say anything bad about him or Wang is not going to spare him. Chen Wei says that it is good that they are back and gives them some food asking Wang what happened. Wang tells her that nothing has happened Xiao only had dome issues with her ability and told her that she could not use her ability, so she showed him. Xiao agrees. Xiao and Shang were happy and relieved that the situation was alright. Wang says that it was getting late, and Xiao and he will leave the place. Leave? Chen Wei asks. Wang says yes as he needed to rush to the next evolution area before it descends. Wang thinks that the Shangdu city military should already know that this place is raided and should arrive any time and if they arrive and if they discover him then it will be difficult for him to leave. Chen asks if Xiao is also going with her, to which Xiao replies yes. Shang starts preparing to leave too. Wang Zhe asks where he is going. Shang replies that they are going to follow Wang. Wang asks aren't they from the Dongchang city? Shang tells that the city has nothing but the zombies and begs Wang to not abandon them. Wang sighs and agrees. Chen Wei asks him to bring her along too. It is hard to survive in an apocalypse so at least everyone can take care of each other and taking care of so many kids alone she will reach her limit soon. Wang is skeptic about the situation. Xiao suggests that Wang should establish an organization of his own. Wang thinks about it, after Chen Wei and Sun Shang join the team would have four evolutioners not weaker than the army and to Xiao AI, it will be more familiar and reliable. Wang asks Shang how many people they have. Shang answers that excluding elderly and kids, they had about 100 people. Since everyone did not want to be separated, Wang agrees to establish an officially recognized organization to help survivors. In the future they are planning to attract and recruit more evolutioners to join. So Shang asks what the name of the organization will be. Wang answers that he has already decided and the name will be. Dawn Breaker. They all get back to the Red Star Kindergarten. Wang is telling all that after the establishment of the organization they are going to need more talented individuals. He tells Shang to stay at Dongchang City. Wang and Xiao will head to next evolution area and will contact them soon. Shang agrees and tells Wang not to worry. Wang Zhe gives a letter to Chen Wei addressed to Xia Ran and Zui Yuqing and tells Wei to give this to the military when they come in the city. Chen asks what that is? Wang says that it is a letter for familiar people and since the Dawnbreaker just established they needed support and help. Wei Chen understood the assignment. As expected by Wei Wan was not simple person. Even though she knew Wang was from Shangdu city she had not thought that he knew the military too. Wang and Xiao tell their goodbye to the team for now. They tell each other goodbye and take cares. Shang cries and tells Wang to remember to contact them. The military were in the city but they were shocked as from the moment they enter the city not a single zombie had attacked them. The was way too smooth. They reach a crater and the soldiers start talking. When the Shangdu city's evolution area was raided the zombies were berserk for an entire week, but why did Dongchang city have no movements of the zombies? Another soldier explained that the evolutioners who raided the evolution area might have done something and made the zombies too scared to come out. 
Zhuo thinks that if it is Wang Zhe something like this makes sense. Asada asks Zhuo if she is looking for something and if she needed the soldier's help. Zhuo tells the soldier that it was nothing and they can do their own work. Zhuo is thinking about Wang and where he could be. Zhuo after waking up after the first evolutionary raid. Xiao was by her side and told her that she had been sleeping for three days. Zhuo asked Xiao where Wang was. Xia asks if Suo can foresee where they will have the next evolution area. On their ride to the next evolution zone. Wan promises to tell Xiao, but she should not tell anyone else. Xiao promises Wang that she will not tell anyone else. Since it will be a long tiring journey she plays some music to lift the spirits and this can help her get more familiar with her new ability too. Wang asks what song is the Pied Piper playing. Xiao replies it is Mozart flute concert. Wang suddenly stops. The data has been collected. Evolutioner ranking is being generated. It was the evolutioner ranking of the whole world's evolutioner combat ability being announced. Top 10, number 10 Alex Girk. Number 9 Zhuo Yu Qing. Shang and Zhuo had met each other. Wang was proud that she had made it to ranking number 9. Similarly, number 8, 7, 6, 5, 4 were displayed. The top three were number three Natasha Vladimir Ikonova, number two, Andrea Williams and the number one was Wang Zhe. This is the end of season one. The author has decided to end the season here. Thank you for your support. Please do check our other series and if there will be another season we will be happy to continue. You can also comment the name of the series that you want to. Don't forget to hit the like button. Comment if you enjoyed. Share it with your friends and keep supporting us. Thank you.